I'm dry. Well, you know. What's up? What's, what's up? What's up? Welcome what's back up, to everybody? another week. What's up, fellas? What's up, brother? How you brothers been? Let's chop it. We gonna chop it up today. How you brothers been for the week, man? Oh, we've been, been good. good. We've been, been good. 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 Yeah. good. Just maintain it. Just maintain it, D. Just maintain you know, it as it comes. You know what I'm saying? A lot going on out here in the world. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot, man. Everybody had a good holiday. Yeah, yeah. man. Just recovering yeah. that from that too. Still, you know. Um. Yeah, man. I just, you know. You know, you just put on that extra 10 pounds, bro. I just feel it, man. I ain't like, it's not like like it was before, man. I, it takes me like a couple of weeks to get some of this stuff off now, man. You know, it's a whole thing, man. It's the food, it's the alcohol, it's the whole situation, man. You know, I was bad this week, this year too, man. Listen, I, get know, I think probably because we didn't go nowhere. You know, I was extra bad, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I gained 10 pounds eating the red and the green M&Ms, bro. So, you know, <laughs> I gained 10 pounds so quick. It don't, it don't matter to me, man. Like, I'm always overweight, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, but they yeah. said they love. Good, they said the women love Big Papa, so can't help. Yeah, it. yeah, we gotta say something. Man. Listen, we ain't getting no small. I'm just gonna get no smaller, brother. I know myself. Bro. You know. Yeah, yeah. Kelvin, yeah, how about man. you, brother? Kelvin, how was your week, man? You know, I, I hate to start off the show on a negative note because it seems like I always do that. But I'm having, <laughs> issue. I'm having an issue with the natives. And well, again, again. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, it was a. It, you know, recently somebody be. left uh, garbage in front of my house, and that's been like a reoccurring theme. So this time I got a little frustrated, and um, I wrote a note on the garbage that wasn't too popular with uh, my nieces. They thought it was something that I was uh, against our people. I don't know if I should share what the note said. Hey, share away, man. Share away. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> they, they li- leaving bottles of liquor and stuff on my yard, on my lawn. So I wrote a note. And put it on a bag and said, "Dear white people, I understand your point now." And so <laughs> my, my, my nieces was upset at me, like you know, white people do stuff too. Why are you acting like we the only ones? And <laughs> they didn't yeah, it was, to me. <laughs> it was frustration. But at the end of the day, they did come back and clean it up. So you know, I just didn't listen. I'm like D. I love my people to an extent, and then. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want to know if people think I was fouled for that. Let me preface this by saying I don't care if people think I was fouled for that. But I, <laughs> you know how people say they don't care what people think. I do care what people think. Just not enough to be governed by it. That's all. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, hey, you know what? I'm gonna answer the question though. Thanksgiving was fine. Everything was good. Yeah. You know, because I know I'm always fouled when I, I don't. I start off wrong. So I apologize. Yeah. Kelvin, it looked like you got left back. Like somebody sent you back to school. Like you got, <laughs> like, like you're a Saturday, like you're a night school for real. You know, you know. Let me say this: a lot of people right now, you may not know, but I'm shooting a movie. Um, I'm in Harlem right now. We're on a set. Um, and the, the movie, the movie is called "My People Don't Know How to Act." And um, <laughs> so, right now, that's where you see me at right now. So I'm on location right here, but nothing stops me from chopping it up with the crew. No matter what I'm doing, that's right. you know. So yeah. that's it. Uh, everything is good. It looks hey, like you're opening. It looks like you're opening a daycare, um, Calvin. <laughs> Where are you, old oh, man? Yo, oh, man. Yeah. Fellas, fellas, I listen. I know they're gonna get on me for this. I know it's unprofessional. I've got to. I've got to address this right now. Just leave it on. Listen. Hold on. I'm sorry because this is. Listen, listen, no. You decided to marry Jay Z. That was you. <laughs> that was you. That's what messed us up. All right, I can't talk about it right now, but you made that decision. All right, we gotta live with it. All right, I have to go because I'm, I'm doing a show right now. I'll talk to you later. All right, all right, all right. Shout, shout out to Hope. It was his birthday. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my god, but, but go ahead, Rod. What's up? What's up, Rod? Nothing, you, nothing. Week nothing. Week? My week was good, you know. Um, I had a little, you know, few events, you know, as far as the kids was concerned. My daughter got her braces off. Um, nice. oh. my youngest turned seven this week. 
Congratulations. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, my son's home, so he did a lot of cooking. So we've been eating really good. So like you say, about that 10 pounds, I'm probably up to 12 right now since Yo, he's been home. He's right. His son cooked well because I went over his house and we, we had uh, some kind of, well, we had steaks or something. What we we know we didn't have, we didn't have steaks. You can't just say steaks. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. We had brazen short ribs. I'm sorry, brazen red wine short ribs. Um, and um, we asparagus. had uh, garlic asparagus with mashed potatoes, garlic mashed potatoes. Okay, okay. So very well. if that's what you had. Nobody ever leaves garbage on your lawn then where you live. Rod has overcame. He heard the speech. He Rod has overcame. When you come on Rod's block, you hear the song moving on up. <laughs> you know? Nah, nah. Shout out to my son. I, got a, I had my boy. My boy had a, a, a birthday this this week too, man. I had one day. Day. Shout, out, shout out to yours. You know what I mean? It's word, word. word. Yeah, so, but now my, my son does his thing. He does his thing. Yeah, he on the tip. Oh, yeah. He um, he's in he's in the second year of culinary school. Dude, Dude. Dude. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So you know, speaking of children, and everything, man. This week, right? We had a. I don't know if you guys all saw the Kevin Hart. What he said. Uh, what was his daughter? A lot of controversy over that. A lot of people getting on Kevin Hart about. How he, what he, how he addressed his daughter and her high activity. For those that know, Kevin Hart's daughter was doing some stuff that he didn't see to be ladylike or represent the family name. So he said she was doing some whole activity. I just want to get guys, you two guys, you have daughters and stuff like. What do you guys think? Well, Ron, you have daughters. I'm, Derek, you have boys, yeah. right? Yeah, I got boys, man. I got, yeah. I, 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 I escaped that part, man. I, yeah. I, 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 so yeah, Ron, I got both. The yeah, right, man with daughters, yeah, you got quite, you got a lot of kids, right? So it was man with a lot yeah. of daughters, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I do on rainy days, baby. You know, but no, the thing is, I I think I said it before on one of the other episodes. Um, dad's job is to um, raise you to be a lady. Mom's job is to make you a woman. Yeah. You know, so the thing is too, and we also have to take into consideration that. Kevin Hart is a comedian, so and I always say there's no bad press. So you know, I think sometimes um, Kevin Hart intentionally stirs the pot just to get some attention, to draw up you know these controversial talks and stuff like that. But I mean, I don't know if I would have announced it if my daughter was my daughter was doing whole activity to the world. But I mean, I'm I would sit down and have a talk with. Her. I would definitely check her about it because, like I say, your father is your father's supposed to give you the game, and he's supposed to raise you to be a lady, and there's supposed to be certain boundaries you're not supposed to go past, you know. But mm -hmm. I, I I don't I don't I don't see it as something that he did something major, except for maybe announcing it to everybody in the world. Well, wasn't it part of a joke though? He told on this special though, because I remember watching yeah. the special that he he kind of alluded to it and it was part of a joke, yeah. and that's that's kind of where I land on. I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. It's his job as a comedian to make people Correct. laugh and you know to right. give of himself because that's what makes him funny. So you see a comedian say, like, "Yeah, my daughter is, has whole activity." You know, it allows you to kind of laugh at it a little because he, you know what I mean. So I don't, I don't really know uh, past that. I kind of look at it as as him just, you know, just telling jokes, man, just doing, just giving yeah. it. I'm, I'm yeah. with you, and just being a comedian. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think he's become a, a easy target, a lightning rod. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think. I mean, basically, those same jokes are going to pay for that young lady to go to school. That's and everything right. like that. And I think he's done a good job of protecting his kids from the media. I mean, I've heard about them. I don't see them much, you know. And um, I just think it is. I remember, I think it was D.L. Hughley or somebody that said, you know, if, if a shark eats my child, you know, it must have been God's will. You know what I'm saying? If somebody tried to do something to them, I'd fight them. But if it was shark or something, it's natural causes. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't really mean that. It's just a joke. And I think what we yeah, done. Yeah. I think we kind of live in this society now where everybody takes stuff too serious. You know what I'm saying? We just joke on stuff like that. You know, that man loves his daughter like anybody else. And so I think it's easy. I think right now we have this this era where everybody's looking for something to be offended by, and that gives them their voice. And I think if you have to live like that, man, it's a sad existence. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I think and like yeah. my thing is like it's the PC generation, all this like political correct stuff and all that, like it's comedy. We would not have if we didn't tell such hard some dark jokes. We wouldn't have a Richard Pryor. We wouldn't have an Eddie Murphy. You know, right. you wouldn't have a, you wouldn't have you know a Chris Rock, uh, even a Chappelle. Like you know, because it's just comedy. It's not. Yeah. Like, it's like we know he takes good care of his kids. Cool. Yeah, most right. like we we not in this house, but ninety percent sure we know that Kevin Hart loves right. his kids. He, you know, he wants custody of his kids. So mm -hmm. like you know, he's he's not that kind of dude. It's just like people don't understand it's comedy. I'm just tired of this soft 
society now when it comes to jokes. Because I say some crazy stuff. I've been yeah. sent to HR, you know, but that's another <laughs> <laughs> but what do we go to, what do we go to comedy shows for? I mean, I don't go to a comedy show to critique it. Like you go to a comedy show to laugh, and it's right, just right. like everybody yeah, now yeah. wants to go to protest. To me, whatever is said on that stage is fair game. It's longer yeah. than the context the of a joke. Agreed. That's yeah. the way it used to be. The first yeah. the first person you have to laugh at is yourself. Well, like yeah. like D was just saying, a lot of comedians they use their families as source of sources of their jokes or whatever. Because let's face the facts, it's funny. Right. And the thing uh-huh. is. You know, people have families, they have kids. So some of those jokes you can definitely relate to as a parent, right. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. I, I agree. It's, oh. it, people are being a little bit too sensitive today. Everything is so off, you know, hands off and whatever. We got we got to get back to not being so sensitive today. Yes, I watched some, some of those old comedy specials, man, and just to see some of the jokes that, yeah. you know, hilarious at the time, but to get them off now, man. It's yeah, like, yeah, wow, yeah. Man. Your career would be over. You'd be getting yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, they were great jokes, man, it, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, all right. Another another thing that was in the t- topic this week, man, was um, if everyone saw this video, it was a restaurant thing in, in Texas. I'm gonna show it's Houston. I'm gonna show if it's Dallas. Can't remember what city it was in. It was a black owned restaurant. Dallas. These Dallas, young ladies Texas. were coming to celebrate. Dallas, Texas. Okay. It was coming to celebrate. Yeah. They uh, uh, it's just celebrating. Maybe a birthday, whatever it was. And they started twerking in the restaurant. They had some 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 trap music on. So, and the girl started twerking. The, the owner of the restaurant went over. Uh, two times previous to tell the young ladies, hey, keep it down. This third time, it came up harsh but direct. And I, for me, I think it was needed at the time because sometimes, like the natives, like my man Kelvin said, don't understand when you try to come <laughs> <laughs> as, as a humble right. as a humble right. man, you know, a humble <laughs> person, you know. So, what do you what are you guys thoughts on that? I haven't seen the video. I've not, I still haven't seen the video, um, but I've heard of it. Obviously, it's all around. And um, I think, man, from what I understand, he talked to them. He asked them, like, on three occasions, you know what I mean? I went to three different tables or something. People were just doing it all over. So, um, listen, if somebody walks into my house and I tell you to sit your behind down, bro, you got to sit down. Get off my furniture. Get off my furniture, man. You know what I mean? It's a lot that goes into you starting your own business. You know what I mean? A lot. You know how it is, man. They get, when, when, you, when you're in business, you got to go out. They get, that business gets the best hours of your day. You go to sleep. You wake up, you know what I mean, refreshed or whatever, as best you can, and you go and you give that place the your very best. And then to see how people then they have to deal with people kind of come in and doing what they want to do. And you know, I am sure it's a hard pill a hard pill to swallow. So yeah, mm-hmm. if somebody came into my house like this and was disrespecting my home, yeah, I would have an issue. You know, I might ask you to be cool for a little while for as long as I could, because you know, I don't want right. you to make a scene. It's my home, I respect it, I want you to respect it. So of course I don't want to make a scene. But you know, past the point, man. Yeah, you know what? It's gonna come out. How it's gonna come out then after a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Well, this is this is the thing, man. This is a slight difference, obviously, Derek. And I get I get your point. So we're talking about being in the business, right? And so this is this is not personal business. And so um, putting it in context, what he said was, I created this establishment for us. And it seems like when we do something, we want to take ownership and we have a pride for our people and give our people. A, a venue that's nice for us. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because a lot of times in our community, we're underserved. Our restaurants, they don't even want us to stay in our restaurants and our neighborhoods, just serve you food and get out. So you want to have a nice place where you can go out and have a good time. I go with him on 95% of what he said. The end of it, when he's like, if you don't like it, get the F out my restaurant. I thought that was a bit harsh. I thought that was a little, and I thought that was the part out of frustration, which can happen sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, these are patrons and you do want them to, to continue to patronize the restaurant. But I understand that he was frustrated. Now, to some people's point or perspective, they felt that the music was conducive to that. I don't know that. I couldn't hear the music um, in it. You know what I mean? And then you have to realize kind of the demographic that you're serving. If you're going to serve a class. Now, I don't know what time this was, but if it's a after the club crowd or if it's a, a under 25 years old or under 30 year old crowd, you may just have you know, people that that don't have the, the restaurant etiquette. Um, but I, I, I gave him credit for that. I think he was trying to make a good point and um, I don't knock him for it. But the, the part about if you don't like it, then get the F out of my restaurant. I think as a manager, as an owner, there's a better way to use a different uh, terminology of vernacular uh, when you're talking to patrons, because the, there's an expression that says the customer is always right. That's not true. The customer just has to be treated like they're right. Yeah, right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree with a lot of things both of you guys said. Um, I do think he got um, passionate, um, considering yeah. what he did for a living. You know, 
and and like like Derek said, it's a, it takes a lot to invest in a restaurant. Like I mean, last time I checked, and it's been a while, but last time I checked, for you to invest into a, a restaurant, you're looking at over a hundred k. You know what I mean? Yep, right, yep. So basically, from a, a restaurant from start to finish, you know what I mean. So basically, this guy has a lot invested in it financially. He's got blood, sweat, and tears invested in it, and wow. I think that speech came out of passion. Right. Me personally, some people may not disagree with me. I think the only people that probably really got offended is if you're a twerker. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so the bottom line is, if you're a twerker, you got offended, and if you're not a twerker, then pretty much you probably can relate with where the guy was coming from. Right. You know. But yeah, he could have said it in a better way, but I think he probably got passionate. Um, and what he does, you know, you, you just open a restaurant, you're in fear of it, you know, during failing. COVID, man. We yeah, during COVID. COVID. Do you understand yeah. how hard yeah. that correct. is under normal circumstances? Yeah, correct, correct. Under right. normal yeah. circumstances, it's hard to get a restaurant. That's one of the hardest businesses you can run. Yeah. My thing is, he was serving up some COVID because he didn't have a mask on, nobody else in that restaurant did either. So yeah. that's a little, that's one thing. But yeah. listen, yeah. tonight, tonight, we got a nationwide chef. He has served meals in different states all over the place he's going to bring his going to introduce his his meal to us and we we're very fortunate to get this guy to come on the studio and cook his meal today here on the chef it up. A, a chef. chef yes 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 he's a chef wow. yes they, they called him the chef up north so with further ado can we bring in chef bore our wing to the studio. All right. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, got his chicken wing. How's it going? Listen. What's up? You listen. You and your listeners are in for a treat tonight. Right. Oh, hold, on. Yeah, hold on. You're a one hand man with a white hand. This is this is amazing today. One now one glove. One glove. One glove. Listen. What I got going is the rice in the microwave. What we're making tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call prison fried rice. Technically, it's federal right. prison fried rice. Because prison fried rice in federal prison is made different than fried rice in the state prison. Because in federal prison, you have more ingredients and there's more things that you can get your hands on to. So, let me tell you what the ingredients are, right? What you can buy from commissary. <laughs> this right here is the summer sausage. They have this in turkey and they have this in uh, beef, beef in the federal prison. You got your adobo you can get from commissary and you got your Mrs. Dad. Now, the other item that's in this fried rice, you could get, but you have to get them stolen from the kitchen. Let me ask you something. Hold up. Whoa, we get whoa. certain items from the kitchen. Are they, they are they snuggled in like the drugs up somebody's butthole? No, 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 no. What happens is sure. you get a contract with somebody that works in the kitchen or that works in the warehouse, and you pay them monthly or tri-monthly to um steal you uh, seasonings like curry. Uh, olive oil, soy sauce, cumin, hey, all wait, those when you, when, seasonings. You, wait, you got, when you say when you say pay, how do you pay? You pay with nightly visits to a sale, or how do you, you, you pay? Because he paid for mine. What happened was whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Me, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean, deep pay? No, deep pay for mine. I charge me fifty dollars a month. Take cash. Take cash. But he wanted you to pay. Hold on, the the, the battery getting ready to die. Huh? Hold on. Uh, so how a, you pay? You pay fifty dollars a month, but he wanted you to pay one fifty at a time. So he had to mail of money to his wife. You remember D? One hundred and fifty yeah. every three months. Listen, for that fifty dollars a month, I got chicken on chicken day, two pieces of chicken on chicken day, extra burgers. I got all the seasonings I needed. I got all the vegetables I needed. You see here, I got a mixture of broccoli, onions, and bell pepper. They don't sell that in the commissary. This right here, only stolen from the kitchen. Only way to get it. So <laughs> that's very important if you're cooking every night. Because you don't want to eat the prison food, but the prison food is, is really not that good. So in federal prison, you kind of end up feeding yourself every night. Like the breakfast is good, the Thanksgiving, the holiday meals are good. But out of the week, maybe two meals are good, the other five are trash. And also, wait, if, if somebody's in there for stealing, this to keep them where they can stay in practice, right? Like, oh, uh, I got <laughs> I got cold and stolen goods. The COs really don't care. Sometimes yeah, you get a CO that's that's a pain in the ass, and he'll he'll write to it. Like I got written up for stolen vegetables in my locker, right? Because you know I was keeping it in my locker till dinner time. Right here, I'm mixing the rice. 
this is the kind of rice, this is the closest rice I get on the street to prison rice. It's minute made, five minute rice. That's the same kind of rice. This one looks like when you mix all the seasonings up in it. And you get it to a nice texture. Now, I was famous for having a proper texture on my rice. You could put my rice in your hand and roll it around like dice. It wasn't gooey, it wasn't sticky. So that's using the right amount of water and the right amount of olive oil. So once you get your rice right, right? You want it in while you're stirring it. You got to put it back in for a couple of minutes, right? We just got to stir it good, everything mixed up and marinate. This is one of the most important ingredients in federal prison, the sriracha. This is the exact same sriracha they sell in federal prisons across the nation. That goes in everything. Some prison dishes are nachos, chicken fried rice, burritos, wraps. Um, I make apple pie in the microwave. I make a hell of an apple pie. You don't put sriracha in apple pie. I make apple pie, cheesecake, mofongo. I, there's a lot of dishes you can make. And, uh, oh, mofongo. That's quite impressive right there, Mofongo. Yo, oh, listen, oh, if I want to have me, how you make that in prison? If y'all want to have me, oh, you Doritos. You crush the Doritos up really good. You crush the Doritos up, you put it around the bowl, you moisten it, put it in the microwave, let it get, you can make it like dough. You put all your ingredients in the inside. You use your bowl to make the shape of the Mofongo. Listen, some of the best Mofongo I had was made by Dominicans that was ex-drug dealers doing time in federal prison. Best mofongo makers in the world. Wow. So we're gonna put that right. back in the white does, 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 does now, Wayne realize he's right home, home now? Right. Wait, wait. Let me show y'all what he did. <laughs> wait. 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 You are no longer in prison. prison. You are not they in don't prison. have you to be home. home. If you can read Wayne. that, Wayne. it's just hell laying sick pink sea salt. I don't know if Wayne. this is more powerful than regular salt, but this is the salt my buddy got. So, I've never even heard of that, so I don't know how powerful this salt is. I hope it don't run my pressure up. Yo, Lisa um, said the, Lisa, Lisa's Puerto Rican. She said that's the most creative way of making <laughs> Listen, he's impressed. Listen, y'all can have me on once a month, and I'll make a prison dish. I'm telling you, listen, I can make it all. But this summer sausage, this summer sausage, when you fry this up in the microwave, the bowl is going to be full of grease. You don't throw that out. You put that in the rice. That's going to add to the flavor. I'm telling you. This is so, every, so everybody in federal prison, everybody in federal prison has wow. high cholesterol. What you say, Pete? Because I have high cholesterol and high blood, blood pressure. pressure. What you they say? Have, they have high so cholesterol. They got high cholesterol and high blood pressure. That's high blood pressure. Because they got pill. They got pills for that, though. Right? Like I don't oh. know how they're going to do the vaccine, but they got pill line. Pill line, sick call. She got lined up. High blood pressure. All that kind of shit. Because everything is full of salt. But the summer sausage. Remember, you don't have no refrigerator in, in, in federal prison. So this can stay in your locker. I had one in my locker for like four or five years. I ate oh it my I... God. What? Ooh. What happened to Wayne? Did he lose? Yeah, oh, man. Clear. Did he lose? Battery probably died. Look yeah. like the battery yeah. probably died. Yeah. Died on. Chef, Chef Boyal Wayne, oh, does, he, does he realize he's home now? He doesn't realize no. he's home well, now? It's no longer institutionalized, man. It's unbelievable. <laughs> So that's why everybody comes home with high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, everything, because of prison fried rice. I have to say this. I have oh, to man. say this. There's a lot of podcasts in the world. You can't get this everywhere. You, I no. mean, you cannot get this everywhere. You have to be honest. Everybody that's viewing, you have to be honest. We make sure you're equipped for any situation that you face. Yeah. It don't get listen, 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 Think about it. The people that support us, you learn oh, how to man. buy a house. We Correct. learn how to socially distance those that go to strip clubs. You can, if you go to jail, you can have delicacy. I mean, it's just come on. It's all Nobody's right doing here this. for you. Nobody's doing <laughs> this. this. All right now, here now next week we need to have a doctor on to talk about diabetes and high blood pressure. Right, right. That you did <laughs> while you were institutionalized. Correct. Because when you come home, you got to get healthy now. <laughs> right. Unbelievable. God. Oh man, thank you, Wayne. That prison, was prison, yeah. prison, prison fries. Yes, yeah, so he, he fries makes it for people. Oh, hey, oh, he's, oh coming he's coming back. back. There you go. Back. <laughs> oh, he's back. You gotta love back, Wayne. Wing. Yo, what's up, Wayne? You gotta be down. So I got to go to my cell phone. Listen. Oh, right, so, Listen, you gotta I be down. I have to go there. to the cell phone. I don't right. know if Barry died or Duke pulled the plug. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, so, yeah. so what we do is, um, so what we do, I showed y'all the ingredients. Let me, uh, 
Let me uh chef it up and maybe I'll come right. out that maybe I'll charge the laptop. I'll come back and I'll show you how to finish product. Okay, cool. Right, okay. How's yeah. that? All right. That's, that's it. That's Sounds it. Like a plan, Wayne. All right, we'll Sounds like all a plan. right later, brother. Yeah. All right, bet. Yeah, one of the people right. said losing right. losing wing might not have been a bad thing because this meal sounds kind of sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I can't imagine eating that. I'll probably be I'll probably be the skinniest guy in jail. Skinniest Wait, guy yeah. in jail. I mean, listen, any meal that you steal is going to be sketchy. I mean, it's yeah. like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. no, but oh, the no, thing yeah. is the one thing the one thing I learned from this is that you have to steal vegetables in prison. Yeah, you can't get the healthy yeah. stuff for free. You gotta steal it. Wait a minute. That, think about that's that true. for a second. They just ain't giving it out. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and then he had a sausage in his locker for four months, right? <laughs> he said four years. Or something he said like four that. years. And we're gonna eat and we're gonna eat this sausage today. No way. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Uh, Listen, man, when, when, Wing, when I used to go visit Wing, man, it was, it was showing me some of those meals that said not for human consumption, bro. The federal Get prison. Here. Yeah, man, they wow. had some bad stuff. They, I mean, when he got sent down to the camp, like he would, they could go gardening and stuff. I mean, Wing, it's a funny story. When Wing said steal, he got, listen, he black, he got caught stealing the watermelon. <laughs> okay. He well, white, he was man, but, we can't get ahead, man. But listen, <laughs> but listen, listen. <laughs> hey, hey. But listen, listen, being in jail, you got to know I knocked some people out. So tonight, we have a special guest. This brother knocked a lot of people out over his career. This man is one, I think he's six-time uh, uh, champion of the world. This brother's a good brother, man. I love this brother, man. I followed this dude for a long time. And he got other stuff going on in his life right now. Can we can we bring in Zab, Super Judah? Zab, Super wow. Judah. Wow. What's going Zab. on? What's up, bro? What up, what up? What what on, I'm, I'm new Zab. I'm new, the champ I'm new Zab. Yeah, we gotta hear. We gotta hear the brother. We gotta hear the brother. We gotta get. We gotta, we gotta get him on mute. Jab. You Zab's on mute. Yeah, he's on mute. Zab is on mute. Producer Jamie, unmute Zab. Oh, okay, there we here go. we go. Zab. Hello. What up, oh, Zab? Go. Yeah, what up? Yeah. yeah, we got you, brother. Yeah. You. Yeah. You. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I, I, how you how feeling? Doing? How you feeling, brother? Man, how you feeling today, man? I'm I. Right, I'm I. Right. Staying focused. Staying focused. That's it. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Yo, Zab, I'm so happy that you came on, man. Really appreciate you, brother, man. And all that you do, man, that for the sport of boxing. And then the way yeah. you're just representing the brothers right now with your, your new career that you got going on, too, man. Really appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. Thank yeah. you for having me. So, you know, I appreciate No, this it's an honor to have you, Zab. Thanks for coming on the show, brother. How's retirement life treating you? Fun, man. A lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Um, never thought it was going to be like this. Never thought it was going to be like this. Um... Um, expect something different, you know. Um, well, well, I mean, to be honest, y'all know me. I mean, if I never had my brain surgery, I would have never retired ever. You know, I mean, I'd have still been. I'd probably been the oldest man in boxing. Come into the ring. Oh. The only fighter that was around for three different decades of, of generations. <laughs> yeah, but Zach, you still, bro, you still look good like you can get in the ring right now. You're a good Real. shape for man, yep. a middle, yeah. a, a alleged, a middle aged man right now. Allegedly, you know. You know what? Um, I just, I just finished up uh, what three, four month training camp with Mike Tyson. Uh, mm. I was in Tyson training camp with him when he prepared for Roy Jones, and you know, you know, I was telling people before the fight, I watched Mike Tyson dedicate himself and from 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 i'm talking about three workouts a day eating right sleeping right you know what i mean doing everything the, the proper way i have to be supposed to do it and i mean it showed at 54 years old i mean it's yeah, not my, a lot of us at 54 it, it, it's not a lot of us at 54 years old gonna go in the ring call no roy jones out so about let's go roy no no we're not right, doing that that's true <laughs> Mike, mike's a vegan now right is mike a vegan Yes, yes, yes. Mm. yes. Mike is a vegan too. Yep. Wow, yep. wow. That's what's so, so he just he just made like a 360, man. He went 360 on everybody and uh he got his mind right and he said, you know, it's his health. You know, his health is number one. You know, as you know, obesity runs in his family. So, you know, he gotta prepare himself and, and, and stay sharp at all times. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's, that's hey Zab, you um you and Mike, you and Mike are like brothers. Would you you see what you would say that? hundred percent. Absolutely. The thing is, um, you've been around Mike Tyson fighting on his fighting on his undercards very early in your career, correct? Yeah, correct. 
tell tell me how you felt fighting on the undercard for the first time under a Mike Tyson undercard. Trying to think back because I opened up for Mike about eight times. So mm. the first time, um, the first time, man. Every time I, I must say this, man, and even now, I mean, people, you know, a lot of y'all see, you know, I do conversation now and then. I just interviewed Mike Tyson for Black TV, and um, every time, no matter what, I'm around Mike Tyson every day. We bug out. I mean, like we, do, I go to crib. We, I mean, every day, all day. Whatever. But when the camera yell action, and it was time for me to actually display what I prepared for him, I felt like a fan. I got in my family. I, I mean, it, it, you know, it was cr- it was crazy. It was like. Like, this is my bro, like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we been around from night to day, sun up, sun, you know what I'm saying? Sun up, sun down. But when the camera cut on, I felt like I was sitting with Mike Tyson, the living legend. I don't know I, I, I don't know what that feels like, but that's what I felt. I felt like I was sitting before somebody that was like, wow. And it was, and you know, everything went smooth though. Questions came out, everything was, you know what I'm saying? It came to go smooth, but I'm telling you, an inside on how I felt even being around my bro. You know what I'm saying? Like uh-huh. when it got to when it came down to sitting down and working with him. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, this is crazy. crazy. Like, like we sit down, we smoke, we we do everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, but <laughs> sit down and interview him, I felt like a fan, bro. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna lie to y'all. No, no. real yeah. talk, real talk. Yo, Zab, you know, you, go on. Sorry, real, real quick. Zab, y'all, y'all, you from Brownsville, right? 100 percent What what is it with Brownsville? You have the so many athletes come out of Brownsville. Tyson, you, you know, yeah, I think Willie Randolph, when you talking about back in the day, baseball players, boxers, like, what is it? Is it something in the water in Brownsville? What do you think it is? No, no. Produce so many we, good athletes. We ain't got shit. We ain't had shit. We, we, the vision we got in Brownsville is not to be shit. So the few of us that have that vision, that really see it, and like, oh, wow, I can become this, I can do this, and start to pursue the steps, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Those are the ones that make it. But as, as us as people, the, we start to see that when when we see a young guy pursuing a career and taking a and taking a, you know what I'm saying an advanced level at it, we got to start to help out now. You, you know what I'm saying? Because you know us mm-hmm. being the big homies of the hood, and you know what I'm saying we see this, we got to be like, all right, yo, let me put a little Tyrone. He ain't a basketball. All right, cool. He ain't got no sneakers. I'm gonna buy him a, a, a brand new pair of sneakers. You know what a pair of brand new sneakers feel like? Going to play basketball, you know what that feel like. That make you, especially if you got a little game in you, mm. that make you feel good. You know what I'm saying? You be like, I, right, I, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's, it rises your level. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. And you know, mm. that's what I'm about now, man. You know what I'm saying? Seeing this, seeing the young guy with the talent that's trying to put it forward. That maybe don't got the finances. Maybe don't got the support. Maybe don't got <clears> the. You know what I'm saying? And you know, what I'm saying we be there for them, and that's what we do now over over here at Team Jibber. It is a nice question. I just want to ask from uh, Ever G. He says, um, "How many people from Brooklyn did you bring to the first fight?" How many people did I have at my first fight? Yeah, from Brooklyn. Oh, did you have man. a lot of people, you know. Well, well, well. I don't know if you've been to a Zab Judy fight, but everybody knows a Zab Judy fight is it's the whole beat. I don't know. I remember <laughs> doing some fights. I remember doing some fights when the ring announcer was like. I think that boy the whole borough with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, real talk, real talk. So, you know, anybody that knows me, you know what I'm saying, from, you know, I got very popular at a young age, you know what I'm saying, through the Golden Gloves, through my amateur background, you know, preparing from New York City to go to the Olympics and stuff like that, you know what I mean? There wasn't a lot of people doing that. So people took a lot of, you know, uh, notices into what I was doing. And um, so when I turned professional, I had a fan base already. And I was already, you know what I'm saying, moving and shaking, and but I was... Young, I was heartless. I was, I was mean, and I was, I was fast, and I could hit hard, and I didn't play with nobody. I ain't gonna joke, bro. Let me me ask you this, Zaf. Let me ask you this question. Um, I think you are you're in the ultimate sport that is about being an individual, and so you know, I think we were taken into kind of the the context of boxing when we looked at twenty four seven and things like that. When you are about to get ready for a fight. And I'm talking about the night of fight night. And you're you're about to walk out and you got the biggest entertainers in the world there to watch you. Um, everybody stops for big boxing matches. What is that? Is it is it 
anxiety? Is it nervousness or is it just second nature when you're going out there? What is your process when you're about to get in the headspace to go into that ring? Mm. When I be going through there and I got, got all my boys bringing me out, all the big artists and all that, my family, mm. yeah, the crowd is packed. I be walking in the aisle like, I hope I don't get my ass whipped. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. Yo, they, yo, yo, they were clapping you back in BK, talk. baby. They were clapping you back real, out. Yo, real <laughs> talk. You be walking out, you be like, ooh, this shit is big, boy. You know, you walking out, you see everybody, you see the homies, all that, the girls and shit, all right. You be like, ooh, I hope I don't get my ass whipped tonight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but, but in all seriousness, that's why you prepare yourself. To the best of your ability in training camp. That's why in my training camps, we went stupid, man. In my early career, oh man, man. For, for, for people that attended my camp and spawn partners that was a part of it, that said, hey, we played no games. We played no game, bro. Like, like, mm -hmm. like now, I can, I'm comfortable enough to say that I got to a point in my career where I got bored. I got bored, bro. It was, I was so good and doing so, winning so much stuff and just, just taking titles whenever I felt like it. Remember, they were suspending me for a year. I take a whole year off and just party, run around the country, act like okay, and they come back and smoke motherfuckers right out the gate. Remember, <laughs> after my Casa Zoo fight, I came right back after the year suspension. I came back and won the WBO championship of the world, the first fight. The first fight back, I took I took the title right back. After they suspended me, belittled me, called me the, the <laughs> The wildness, and I was, I was, the, I was the Brownsville kid of boxing. You know what I'm saying? I was, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They tore me down. Said I was, I was young. I was this. I was that. I was that. The first fight back, I took the championship of the world right back. And, then, and so they had to shut their mouth up. They had to shut up. Yeah. They had to shut up. Like you know what? Yeah, we say what we say, but this boy is, he doing numbers. He doing numbers. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and, yeah. and throughout my career, that's all that mattered to me. Was I was like, you know, no matter what people say. That's how I became six times champion of the world from losing to win and losing to win and losing to win and losing to win. It's just that, you know what I'm saying? The moment when I lost it and they said, oh, yeah, all right, champ, that's it. So look at mother, you super ball, come right back and get another one. I come right back and get another one. My sixth world title, God bless the dead, rest in peace, Pernell Whitaker was in my corner. He was my coach. Him and my dad was in, was, was, was in my coach for the uh, last. Man, everybody in that I then knew said he can't do it. He 30, what? I was 30, mm. 30, 38, 38. You know, like mm. I was around the ages where they call boxers old. Like that, that was right. old for boxers. And I came back and I took my six world, my six my championship of the world. I'm going to tell you how they had it so much against me. The guy I fought, he was from Africa. Uh, the IBF was the title we was fighting for. But I never seen this. So in the back of the belt, it's like it's like fur and stuff. They had it leopard, leopard, like leopard, leopard print. I never, I never seen this before. It was like African leopard print, and I was wow. like, well, why, why did they do it? Like, so this, it was almost seeming like this belt was designed for him. He was a good That's, fighter. Wow. He was, he was a good fighter coming from Africa. He was smoking everything. He ran the soup. I put him to sleep. Night night, <laughs> night, 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 night. I'm talking about, I'm talking about <laughs> night, night. Yeah. Mike, hey, was listen, there, Mike was going crazy. Yo, it was. Yo, crazy, I put him to sleep. Yep. Zaz, speaking of night, night. Last week, our brother Nate Robinson went night, night. Mm -hmm. Have you spoken to Nate? Is he how's he doing? What do you think about people? <laughs> <laughs> yo, every everybody yeah. can't get in that ring, right, Zaz? Oh, yo, listen, no. man. Listen, Ooh. I love Nate, man. Nate's Ooh. a good dude, but like, like. Ooh. What are your thoughts on brothers that think they can do what you do? Like you, like you say, you've been doing this since from like almost the dirt. What do you think about brothers that think they could come in the ring? Like Nate Rob, it's sad to say, man. My brother Nate Robinson learned the terminology. You play basketball, you play boxing. I mean, you play basketball, you play uh, baseball, you play soccer, you play tennis, you play hockey, you play everything. You do not play boxing. Not sad to no. say, he is the face of. You do not play boxing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he Nate, is the face. Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson put himself in another category. The NBA, he's an NBA player. The NBA for him stands for never box again. <laughs> <laughs> never. Never. Don't never do that, Nate. Nate. You the homie and all that. We love you and all that, Nate. But, like, you know what I'm saying? He just, he just showed that. Or oh, what I would tell Nate Robinson, and this is real genuine, like, I'm really being serious. If you're going to do that again, reach out. Reach out, bro. I'm, I'm wide open. I fuck with you. You 
my boy. Reach out. <laughs> Zab, what's up, what's up, what's up? I come, we get the real proper training. We'll get, we'll cross all the T's and dot all the I's, and then we'll set the ring and smoke anybody. I promise that. But to, but to do it, I don't know how he did it. I'm not going on his shit. I don't know about his training or nothing, but I'm just saying from the way it looked it, he ain't, do, he ain't prepared the right way or didn't have the right people behind his, behind, behind, yeah. behind his back. So Nate, if you hear this, you hear, somebody give it to Nate, your boy Zab, I said, yo, listen, all hats off, pull up on me, let's learn the right way, and then we can go in and smoke anybody. But don't do it that way. Don't do it that way, brother. That ain't it. That ain't yeah. it. No yo, way. Yo, Zab, I want to ask you this, right? You know there's a fight tonight, right? Earl Spencer and Danny. Yeah. yeah. You fought Danny Garcia in 2013, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that was a brawl, kid. Like I don't even know how you were standing yeah. up after that, how he was standing up after that. <laughs> I mean, you guys got it in from soup to nuts, you know what I'm saying? How do you think he's going to do tonight against Earl Spencer? Um, you know, it was the same thing with the fight before, you know, Danny called me, you know, I had what? I was 10 years older than Danny. I think yeah, yeah. tonight. I think tonight is some of the not not ten years, but maybe seven years, six years younger than Danny. And um, so tonight, you know, what I'm saying like like I said, Danny got he, he got the rope a lot, but now we find him with a bigger a bigger welterweight, weight, uh -huh. longer reach, a good clean boxer, a person that's been known since the I mean, like see see me, I know Earl Spence well. I watched him from the amateur from the amateurs. He was stopping the opponents. He was stopping guys coming up his whole career. That's what right. he's known for. He, 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 he's a young, Texas strong boy. Put it like, I mean, a man, you know what I'm saying? He's, yeah. What I mean by, I say Texas, we know them Texas boys are strong. You know what I mean? They got, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, the farm, they got, from the farm. They're right, yeah. the farm boys. Yeah. They got, they got a whole yeah, 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 yeah. They have the air they breathing. <laughs> and in, you, know, you know, us city boys, we live different. It's, I mean, it's yeah, yeah. I got I got my country homeboys, and they they, they totally different. We the same age already, but I'm like, how you can pick all that shit? I can't do that. I never eat. I don't know how to do nothing. I don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They know how. They know they got a whole different skill level than we. We don't know nothing about what they know about. And then, as city people, we have another skill in city life that they know nothing about. You know what I'm saying? They got, yeah, I'm only yeah, from, yeah, from, yeah, from the south yeah. coming to New York, and they want to move and shake. And I'm like, boy, boy, you don't move like that. You you get left over there like that. You that's how you move. You know what I mean? So. It's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Each is only, you know, everybody, each one teach one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Zab, let me ask you this question. I, I consider you one of the uh, historians and guardians of the sport. Um, lately, we've been seeing over the, 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 the last decade or so, uh, MMA has got a lot of popularity. It seems like younger people have not been as vested into boxing. If you have noticed this and you were going to rebrand boxing or remarket it because of when it was you and it was Floyd, everybody was captivated. Now it just seems like it's been dissipating. Um, have you noticed that? And if you have noticed it, um, what would you do to get younger people more interested back in boxing? Well... I gotta beg to differ with you on that one. The game is exciting right now. You got a young guy, you got Telefima Lopez. Let's start with him for, for, for Brooklyn. Let me tell you the legacy of what this means right here. So winning the undisputed championship of the world is probably one of the most hardest and prestigious titles in, in boxing that you can put together. Because that means that out of all of the championship belts, you the only one with all of the belts. Very hard to do. Very hard. Only a few guys to put together. Let's go to Brooklyn, New York. We got Mike Tyson. We got Riddick Bowe. We got Zab Judah. We got Telefema Lopez. I mean, this is this is this is big stuff. We got we got one more. Two. We got we're gonna see Bo, Mike. Um, Shannon, I'm getting, I'm Shannon, 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 Brooklyn, right. Brooklyn alone, mm -hmm. bro. This, this is you see what you see what I'm going with. This, so, so you guys are our guys. But wait a minute, do, do you have people today that can carry that that baton? I'm, okay, but right now these young men just put that together. You have my godson Devin Haney, 21 years old. No, probably one of the hardest fighters, hardest fights out there for anybody in the 135 weight clown weight weight class right now. You got Tank, Tank is our Tank just put. Yeah. Tank the boy to sleep and yeah. Tank just put the boy to sleep and tremendous tights and yeah, 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 you know what yeah. I'm saying? You got Earl Spence that's going tonight. You got the game mm, on. Yeah. You, got, you got Terrence Bud Crawford that just fought last week. He's, he's hit motherfucker with a uh, 
it was like a thunderous uh, boat killer. Like, boom! And, and, and yeah. took life out of his body. So to say the boxing game is, is, is in right now, it's doing good right mm-hmm. now, you got to just, okay. you gotta just tap in. But you know, you know what it is, guys? It's a different crowd. That's what it is. It's a, mm-hmm. Like all the names that we knew, the Zabs and the Tysons and the Linus and the Haggard, that's, that's gone now. That's over. Yeah. It's a new name, a new proper guys, but these young boys is bad. I ain't gonna front, y'all. They bad. They can fight. And they and, and they Zab, want the smoke. Hey, Zab, Zab, yeah, let me ask you a question. Oh, you know, you mentioned you mentioned uh Tia Fimo and, and and Devin Haney. I was just wondering what your thoughts was on the WBC, you know, the, the franchise and the and the and the regular you know, the regular uh uh belt. You know, when do you think those two are ever gonna get it on, man? When when, when do you think it's gonna stop that? I mean, listen, man. Um, I'm Suleiman is a he's a great guy, man. You know, he puts together situations and you know what I think you know I I think it's good because it kinda separates fighters to like get them to look at each other. Why here's a world champion and here we have a guy that we consider a super champion. But now we can highlight on two guys that are one. Picture it just being that one belt. Then you wouldn't get this guy right here of his likes of, of his likes that's on him and with the world is looking at him, he won't he won't get that. We won't know that. We won't know him to be because this only only this one guy is the champion. So I think with both of them being a champion and super champion, uh, it's pretty good because it, it it creates interest to let you right. see in the weight class who's the best guys out there that should be fighting each other. I think for me, that's what it is to me. Excellent. Do you think pay per view like some like before when we were growing up and and like you have fights on Saturday afternoons? Stuff like that, mm-hmm. or you know, a regular like you know, people could tune into it. Do you think that everything going to pay per view is kind of messing it up for the for the people getting more uh, uh, the gravitate towards the younger fighters that doesn't have the big names? I think it's you know what it 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 goes with the time of life right now. We live in a monetary a monetary world right now. Everything that every every everything is being done is a, is, is a monetary situation. You know what I'm saying? So I think that you know what I'm saying we're rising. You know what I'm saying? With it, you you talking about the W the WBC, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any any, any of them, like right now, because you don't see too many fights. Like for younger cats, when I was in high school, man, I could go on the, in the afternoon on a Saturday and catch a, a, a fight for free on the TV yeah. on Channel mm-hmm. Seven. Maybe the yeah. Wild World of Sport, Wild World right. of Sports, and all that kind of stuff right. like that. Right. Do you right. think right. like Mom, now? now yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Do you think that if they brought it back to those days, like bringing it back on regular TV so kids could tap in, do you think that would bring like you know to bring like the highlights? So, so the names that you mentioned that everybody would know their names, they would just roll off their tongue. Because back in our day, yeah, Pernell Whitaker rolled it, off our tongue and, and stuff like that. It probably would, but here's what happened: they messed it up already. They already showed you that you can get in the ring and fight this guy and make five million dollars. So now, yeah. when, when we go back to regular free TV, free TV doesn't have the budget that a pay per view can sh- uh, uh, generate. That's you right. know what I mean? So now here it is. We want we want Zab Jewel. We want you to fight Mike Tyson, but we only got thirty five thousand dollars for you because it's just network budget TV. Gotcha. And you looking at them like, are you fucking a uh, what? <laughs> uh, Mike Tyson had your fight. You better go get ten million. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So that's how. People gonna look at it now. They are gonna be like, "Oh, wait a minute, what's the name of him just for over there on 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 that network?" And they made blah blah blah. You want me to fight on this work and fight King Kong for how much? Oh hell no, I ain't doing mm. it. That, and that's that. why that's why pay per view always is gonna is, oh, you know, so it's gonna be boss. Win. Right, so it's gonna be boss. Give me one name if you could go back in history and fight anybody, whether it was on the heroes or not. One fight that you, if you could drill a dream match for yourself that you never had a opponent that you never was able to face even if it was it preceded you who would that have been i would never say none of the pioneers because to me that's disrespectful because these are the guys that paved the way for myself to get in there and talk act walk and do everything that i'm doing today you know what i'm saying so i would never say it would be disrespectful for me to say i would love to see zab judah and sugary robson like what right. like it's no no you know what i mean so I always tell people the way the cookie crumbled, the way it rolled out, the, the fights that happened in, in the show, that's what was supposed to happen. Gotcha, yeah, man. it was fights that it was fights in my career that was, it was one particular fight that was supposed to happen was Zab Judah and Shane Mosley. And you know, I fell to the shower and cut myself and 
you know, I got jammed up pretty bad. And that's a fight that was scheduled to happen for me, but never happened. And that's something I could comment on and say, yeah, I would like to see myself fight Shane. I would love to fight, you know, have had for Shane at that time because, you know, at that time I was hot. You know what I'm saying? I was going up. Shane was, you know, Shane was still in the middle juggling. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So that's probably one of the fights that I would say that I would want to tap into. Well, well y'all can fight. Y'all can fight at fifty now. Zad. Y'all can come back and fight at fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you. I ain't gonna tell you the way the way that this retirement life is set up and the way these super punch packs is packed. Oh yeah, we gonna get brother, to that. We gonna get to that. Brother, we gonna get brother, to that. No, no. The way they packed up in it, good stuff in it. I don't think no room, no, no, are coming back to ring for me. No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, no. <laughs> hey, hey Zab, if in your career, if you could have one fight back, do you, in other words, maybe you you might have a fight that haunts you, and you say, Dag, if I could have did this, or if I could have did that, or if I could get a rematch, do you have any fights in your career that you wish you could have back and get back in there with them again, a second shot at it? crazy to say man no because no if i ever let me tell you why if i ever went back and changed one fight that changed the 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 the, the, the dynamics of who zab super judah would be right now and then okay. if i changed that one fight and took that win back then everything would have been altered life would have been different you know what mm-hmm. I, you, you know what i'm saying so i would have been probably the same guy sitting here talking to you, you know what I'm saying? So, and 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 that is what I always try to stay away from. It's like, damn, is that what if, could have, what if, what if, what if? And I always tell my kids that, like, don't sit around and be a what if, you know, what if this happened, what if, no, no, go ahead and make it happen now. Or do it, when it's your time to do it, do it. Don't, 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 don't do nothing. And then sit back like, damn, man, no one I was doing that, I wish I would've, man, I wish I would've, I wish I would've. I try to stay away from that. So I think, and pretty much feel that everything that I wanted to do with boxing, the most high took me to it, man. We accomplished it. We had I remember, yeah, you know, Zab, I remember uh, at one point speaking on that. You, uh, you, it was you and it was Shane Mosley and it was Floyd, man. It seemed like y'all were the three dudes, man, that were really like running this thing yeah. for a minute, man. And I remember uh, when you fought Floyd Brooklyn, when Brooklyn was electric, brother. You know, everybody oh, was, yeah. it was, it was bananas. <laughs> I was living out in Best yeah. at the time, you know. And uh, yeah. would you say, would you say that uh, that was the biggest fight of your of your career? If not, what you think the biggest fight was? Um, I think it was one of the most notable fights because of everything that he set forth out to accomplish after boxing or right. or in boxing what what made what it came to. But I think for me, one of the, the biggest platforms that I was when I fought Corey Spinks the second time, only because I had to go to his hometown and take away. The undisputed championship of the world. That was yo, y'all don't know what that was like, bro. At this time when I went to St. Louis, they was known as uh the number one murder rate. Yep. Murder right. the murder, the murder capital that was number one <laughs> in the country. And I yeah. bro, lo, lo, me little Brooklyn boy was coming to St. Louis to dethrone their undisputed I mean their undisputed welterweight champion of the world. And it wasn't easy, brother. I had to go against him, the city. Everything, brother. <laughs> Everything, brother. It was a uh, you know how I ate my dinners that night. I had to sit. I had a I had a conditioner trainer. He was a white guy. I said, "Come back to the room. Take all that TV shit off. Put your regular clothes on, and go out to the thing and order the food. So you can look like you're a regular guy just making an order. And that's it. Nobody will bother him. You know what I'm saying? But if you if we did to put Team Judah shit on and go out there and order our foods and get up, what brother? We'd have been Food pointing in, we been the fight. I can't, I can't come out, man. I can't come out. I would, I would, I would have never, ever, ever made it. Never made it. Never made it. Yeah, crazy. Zab, so you, Zab, you got, you got. I think you have what, four daughters. How many? You have kids, right? Like four daughters, four something daughters. like that. Yeah, because I saw you on. Yep. Uh, yeah, I saw you on over Instagram. You was talking about your daughters. Would you, would you let your daughters buy? I have four daughters and four sons, and I wouldn't let. Let's say I wouldn't stop them from fighting, but I wouldn't push them to fight because I did a, I had a long hard. I mean, a long. I did everything in boxing. You can look at it. We had almost, I did everything almost up to dying. Like I did everything, a full career. I won all the belts three times, six times, six, six, six different times, three different weight classes, from amateur to professional, to almost dying. You know what I mean? So. Would I push my kids to fight? No, never. 
would I help them if they show interest and came to me and show me this is something that they wanted to pursue? Yeah, I would give them the pros and cons for everything that can happen in private. And yes, I would help. I would a stand stand by my child. But I put them like, oh, because I'm Zab Jude, I'm your dad. You would do the. You got fight. No, never. Yeah. Never. Not, that's a not, good not analogy, Zach. That's, that's a good, a good that's analogy. Very, yeah, yeah, from yeah, a yeah. father, from a father's yeah. perspective, that's a great analogy because yeah. you know I I tell fathers like when they when I see them pushing their kids into a certain sport, I said that's not a natural thing that they have to want to do that, especially when you're playing a contact sport. Contact sports are no, joke, you know what I mean. But um, if you yeah, if you had to give, oh wait, hold on, it's crazy you say that. I got ten brothers, and okay. only uh only four of us fought. Now, my, okay. my pop, my, my pop was a fighter, so his rules was all of my sons got to know how to fight. He don't give a shit if you want to compete or not, but you want to know how to fight. He said, because, you know, I raised my sons in Brooklyn, New York, Brownsville, Flatbush, so my son's going to go do different things. But, you know, one thing, you ain't going to compete, but you got to know how to defend yourself. And that's one thing my pop did was he made all of us defend themselves. Now, upon learning, some of us took it to the next level. Some of us said, some of my brothers were like, yeah, yo, all right, Pop, this is it for learning. I, I'm done. I'm not doing this. I'm fucking right. I ain't with it. Yo, I got a brother like, I'm not playing that. Somebody punching my face. I'm not with none of that. I'm not, I don't, I don't want to do this. My brother said, Zach, people are not made to punch each other in the face. This is not supposed to happen. This is not normal, Zach. <laughs> I swear, bro. This is my brother. Like, man, this is not made for everybody, bro. I'm not yeah, doing yeah. this. I, I don't want nobody punching me in my face that and, and a couple of them didn't box it didn't box. only four of us took it to you know a professional level and took it to the next level but the couple of them said nah it, it ain't for me i did what my mother said <laughs> we learn how to fight that's where the line stops at that's it <laughs> yeah, yeah. what would what kind of advice would you give a young fighter starting off in the boxing game young fighter uh uh, number one, learn how to fight first. Learn how to fight first. Get with a trainer that knows how to pay you well. And then number two, well, number two, which is number one, be in the best condition you could ever be. I, I would tell fighters, I would tell the fighters to be in condition before you know how to fight. I would, yeah, I would give them that much advice. You know why? Because this, 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 this was the one thing that hurt me in probably one of my biggest fights today, which, which was the Mayweather fight. I didn't lose that fight because I wasn't because Floyd was better than me or anything. I lost that fight because I ran out of gas. The first six rounds, I held that fight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Floyd didn't start coming on. Floyd didn't start coming on to me until I started getting fatigued. Once fatigue yeah. started setting in and he seen that, then he started coming on and started pressing me. But when I had the same yeah, he had the same timing, he had the same speed, I was faster, I hit harder and I was doing better. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't so when the fatigue kicked in he got the best of me, which was he did what he was supposed to do. He was in better condition, and he excelled when he seen the opportunity to open up on it, and, which is great. So anything I could tell fighters, be in the best condition. Because the fighting, if, you, if you're if a good fighter, you know how to fight, and you got the will and the ball to be in there, and you want to kind of remember, like I tell you, it takes another whole set of nuts to be able to open the ropes and climb through and like, I'm ready to fight that man. That's a whole, a whole another set of nuts, brother. Trust me, yeah. that, that's that's not easy to come to the ropes and look across the ring at another man and go, I'm ready to fight. Let's go. Yeah. Like that's, that's Dave Robinson. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. Yeah. That's I what I'm saying. You, yeah. I um I, I started boxing about four years ago, right? And I did exactly what you said. I got between those ropes and they put me in the ring to spar with no headgear against a a, a Russian seven foot tall kickboxer. Okay. <laughs> The man hit me in my left eye. I announced my retirement at that moment. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I'm man. talking about. I did. I, about I, did. I, did. I could get the vision back enough to see where I was going. I just said, no, excuse me, sir. I made a mistake. You know? yeah. I like yeah, it. Yeah. Right now. That's it. But no, I commend you with anybody else. And let me tell you something. You are great at what you do. You've been, yeah. I, I want you to know, um, I'm a big fan. And, and what you've done, I couldn't be more proud, especially as a native New Yorker. And uh, you held down Brooklyn. I mean, you, right. you you really, really wore that crown. And I definitely yeah. appreciate it and admire it. So, so Zad, with your new career that you got a lot of stuff going on, I see behind you got Super Punch. Can you tell people what yeah, you're doing yeah, now yeah. with your new career and all the stuff that you got going on, man? Yeah, so, yeah well, Super, so what you got, Super, man? 
Super Punch. I mean, uh, as everybody that know, um, um, my last fight, I, I, I received uh, brain surgery. I had brain surgery because I fought a fighter. He was on PEDs. Uh, he was on performing enhancing drugs. And, uh, you know, he went in there. I was in a coma. I got put in a coma. And I suffered uh, maybe a week, in a, a week in the hospital. Then I got out. I, I received brain surgery. And, you know, uh, due to marijuana usage, it slowed down a process of pressure from my right side to my left side of exploding in my head while walking. And if this process would have happened, I would have had maybe five seconds to try to get help. If not five seconds from to open my brain up and, and drain out the, the liquids, or if not, I would have been brain dead, I would have been in a coma, been brain dead, been vegetable, and then pull the plug and I would have been gone. But due to this uh, marijuana substance use, that didn't happen. So this part of my life, guys, you know, people see me smoking weed and they think that I'm, I don't do it because it's cool. I do it because it, it was a medicine that helped me. It, it, I swear to God, it helped me. It took me to the next level. In some states, we have recreational use. Some states, we have, I mean, in some states, we have recreational use as long as medical. You know what I'm saying? My essential situation came from medical use, but I do have medical and I do have recreation. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, you guys can check out my product and check out everything going on with the Super Punch thing. Is you, you can follow me at superjuda.com and uh, you can get the latest and greatest on uh, the candidate strain and everything is going and where it's going. Make sure you sign up and put your email in and uh, you know we will contact you back. Also, we're having a contest, a Christmas giveaway contest. Uh, uh, check this out. You must have it said you must follow you must you must follow my page, tag three of your friends for a chance to win a lot of super punch merchandise. Now I want you guys to go into my site, superjudy.com and check out my merchandise. You guys are gonna see it and see that we got a lot of cool stuff, guys. We got beads, bags, we got shirts, we got hoodies, we got hats, we got masks, we got we got everything, guys. So check it out and uh you know and sign up for it and uh stay tuned with me. And super super punch is the brand. And um, that's what we're doing with that. Now, as far as uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow night is the launch of my uh, is the launch of my uh, television show. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, uh, and, oh, yeah. 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 Nice, yeah. nice. Yo, you, yeah. you didn't tell yeah. me about that one, brother. You didn't tell me about yeah, that I, one. Where can we find I, that at, man? I, Come I, on, man. Well, I put up my page. Today. It's called Champ Talk. It's called Champ Talk. Yeah. And uh, you know, here's you know, say tomorrow night we're gonna start out on the, on the Instagram. We're gonna start with the gram, and then we're gonna branch out because we got. A couple of good offers and things like that, but we're gonna start tomorrow night on Instagram. We're gonna at six o'clock, uh, 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 Pacific time, and I'm gonna be talking to the fan, interacting, answering questions. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want people to have an opportunity of coming on and and just just as you guys are doing now and asking questions that's probably been in your mind with that Judah for the years, or actually, or, or 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 asking a boxing question that's probably in your mind that you don't have the answer to. You might be like, "What's that? Zab should know this." Blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? So tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, I'm going to open it up for chance nice. talkers that Judah. Yo, good that, man. Yo, nice, that's, man. That's, that's what's up, man. Yo, Zab, thank Yo, you so much, man, for coming on. Oh, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. But D, Bye, I want to I wanna pay Zab a compliment, and I know that you can vouch for this being true, right? Mm -hmm. um, Zab is a regular at the Barclay Center. Oh, yeah. And me and Zab yeah, up into each not, other. Absolutely. Zab yeah. rose on my hand, Monte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Monte now, broke now, a couple of days a That's couple, a couple, do, a couple of times, a couple of times we went to um events at the Barclay and Zab was there. And there's one thing I want to pay a compliment to you, Zab. You speak to everybody. You say what's up. Uh, you take pictures with true. people. Very you know true. what I'm saying? If you got a suite, Zab comes in the suite, says what's up to everybody. Yep. Dude, you are an epitome of a gentleman. And I want to say that you know it's just was an honor because that's how I first met you. I met you at the Barclay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just want to say always thank you for being a class act, man. I appreciate that. Thank you, bro. Yo, yo, thank you, bro. Yo, I appreciate yo, it. Yo, yo, yeah. Zab, Zab, your man just showed up to my yep. crib. He has keys in my house. Look who's look who just showed up. The computer guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see him. <laughs> what's up, Zab? He made prison it's fried rice. It's, he made it's, chicken, it's chicken wings. It's chicken, it's chicken wings. It's chicken wings. It's chicken wings. 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 That's my yeah, yo, I'm not eating look at that. Look at that. Yeah, I'm not eating this. Yo, you look eat that, that. you're gonna get high blood pressure and have a stroke. I know, I'm gonna let us know. What's up? You gotta let us know. I had to bring it because the computer died. 
His computer died, so he had to show me this, this fool. This is this is insane, bro. This is insane, man. Yo, Zap, man. You never you know you never know what's gonna happen unless you chop it up, man. You never know what's gonna happen, man. Yo, Zap, brother. Listen, I love you, man. Yo, stay who stay who you are all the time, man. People, yeah, you are true. people's champ. Like the thing with you and and Ali that you really rock with the people. Like you know, saying like yeah. some boxes that you yeah. fought. I'm not gonna say, it, but they always hide behind big bodyguards. When you see Zab, Zab is out here just like whatever, whatever. Yeah. I see Zab yeah. all the time. I, I know. Listen, all man, right. I'm on the show. Come on, this, my, this guy's crazy. Man. <laughs> yeah, but Zab, yo, 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 bro, thank you, man, for spending your time. With, I know you're busy, man. I don't know. I'm gonna finish the show with this guy here now, man. But I, but, we, I love you, Zab, go, man. The people love you, man. We about to go watch the say? fight, Earl Spencer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We all gotta, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah it's about to start. Oh, yeah, like an hour. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. brother. Salute, salute to you, man. Yeah, right, thanks again, Andrew. It's, it's been a pleasure. Peace, 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 champ. Peace. Oh man, yeah. that for wow. yo man for a fight fan like me, brother, yeah. I just could just sit back and just watch and just listen, yeah. brother. That was just, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. I'm just excited and happy to be a part of that, man. That was good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the thing is, too, one yeah. thing about Zab. Zab fought everybody that was somebody in his way. Everybody, Every, everybody, everybody, everybody. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He didn't run for nobody. They basically wanted to get it in. Zab said, as long as the money's right, it'd be good night. That's it. We can get yeah. it in. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Word. All, all, so, it, all, all competition. That's a good dude, man. Good good dude. Dude. And, and the, thing, the thing is, too, like, um, like Zab's father was his trainer for like a huge portion of his career. And like you know, to see a father and son, you know, um, you know, to be so successful together, yeah. you know, I, I admire that. I, I oh, admire yeah, that. Definitely. I admire that a lot. You know what I'm saying? They accomplished a lot as a father and son team. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it takes a lot, though. I learned. Yeah. I learned a lot One from that. He's, he's excellent, excellent. Definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely. That was definitely an honor to have yeah. Zab Jude on the show. Oh my what's, God! What's going on with that? Man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta bro. put a fork in it, man. Let us know what's going on with it, man. One time, brother. Come on. Right, I'm gonna try a little bit of. He did something to D screen. D ate that in the screen and change. What happened is, what happened is, <laughs> right, my screen game. Yeah, yeah, you know why your screen, screen changed? Screen your, screen, your, screen, your screen changed because all of the salt that's in that. Now you got high blood pressure. Everybody's it's seeing blurry. <laughs> it's, 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 it's salty. <laughs> How's it taste? Yo. It, 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 actually tastes, it, it actually tastes really good. It's salty. Yeah, but it tastes it's really good? good. Kid, the yeah. MSG, that, the the MSG right. in, that, in that shit has got to be off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, swim by the end of the show. Right now. Yeah, yeah, I gotta get out of here. But I just wanna let y'all know, yo, this is chicken wing the five with the chicken wing show on Instagram. Man. I got some prison fried rice recipes on there. You know what I'm saying? Yo, thank y'all for having me on the show. Fellas, I love y'all. I'm not gonna go, I put my mask on. Rod, we got a sponsor. Rod, he's on. Rod, tell people we got uh, our sponsors coming up, man. We do. We got two sponsors. We got a sponsor that came back, and we got a new sponsor. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got um, we got a uh, a business that is selling head wraps and masks. Very nice stuff. Very quality All made. Right. Um, and we got new life Seamoss that came back. You know, you got to keep yourself right. your immune system boosted. Keep your uh, immune high, immune system high. You know, we still got this COVID out here. So um, we're gonna go to those two sponsors, and we're just happy to have them. Thank you so much, sponsors. Yeah, let's do it. Thank God for sponsors. Yo, listen, yeah. that's fantastic. <laughs>
<laughs> had another bite in between the commercial. God, yeah, I, need, I need water now, man. Mm. Or salty, but listen, hey, I don't know. We I'm have, we have a new morph tomorrow. Tomorrow, <laughs> I'm buying some sea morph tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 man. Yeah. And, I, and, head, and I'm gonna get me one of the head turbines, but. <laughs> uh, since it's, a black, it's cold, man. I got, yeah, I look, yeah. I gotta look right on, on the next look, show. Yeah, I gotta look right on my work zooms, man. I'm you know? I'm you. I'm you. But listen, no, any business our people doing, I'm supporting. There exactly. There listen, since it's a boxing night tonight, this, this time I think we're gonna have a. We have to have something for the ladies. We all know we the records always say we gotta have something for the ladies. So tonight we have another boxer tonight on a, on a lady, a woman boxer tonight. We have a lady. Killer Mel, another one out of BK. Killer Mel, can we bring Killer Mel into the studio? Something in that book of war. Hey, Killer Mel. <laughs> Killer Cupcake. Mel on these streets. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> What's up, Mel? How you doing no today, biscuits. sister? I'm good. <laughs> and she's a North, you, Killer Mel, you're titled the North American uh, boxing champion, right? Yes, yes, yes. And they be <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Mel, Mel, so I mean, what made you get into boxing? You're a pretty young lady and everything like that. You know, some people are like, oh, pretty don't mean nothing. But what made you get into boxing? Oh, I mean, I grew up in a a violent house, a household. <laughs> oh, so you, had a, you, had, you had to fight your way to the kitchen? <laughs> you got to get man, the fight from here? Man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, you fight for that last biscuit, boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> And then, then she started giving out two pieces in the biscuit. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's what she started Mel, doing. Mel, how long how long you been fighting professional now? Oh man, uh since 2005, I want to say I have my pro debut. Yeah, I think no 2007, I think. So how I'm was not it, sure. How was it was early. It was early. But like it's different when you like before like you sparring and you fighting your sisters or your brothers and stuff like that. How is it when you first like step in the ring? What the butterflies are there? It, what what are you thinking? Damn, I, I'm I'm be like, dang, what did I sign up for? <laughs> 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 right. You know, cause, cause before boxing, you know, I always got into fights, you know, so that's different. You know, somebody walk up mm -hmm. on you, you already like, you know what? You about to you about to get hurt right now. But you know, yeah, to yeah. be in the ring and, and get your mind to a place like, bitch, I'm about to fuck you up. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, God. But, oh, you know, as time went, you know, when I hear that bell ring, I know what time it is, but you know, sometimes I'd be like, damn, what am I mm. doing? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna ask you a question, and this is probably a double standard. Do men have a hard time approaching you when they know, um, first of all, that you could uh, beat them down, and secondly, guys <laughs> want to feel like, from an ego standpoint, that they can be a protector? Like, if you went out with a guy, the reality of it is you're more skilled to protect him than he is to protect you. Is it ever uh, an issue with that? First of all, they never guess it. All right, um, they always ask, you know. Uh, do you know? Do I um play basketball? Do I do gymnastics? Do I run track? Yes, I did. Used to run track, two time All American, four hundred meter right. hurdles, hundred meter all hurdles. Right. <laughs> they never ask boxing. So you know, um, when I tell them like, no, I fight, then that's when it's like, oh shit, like you ain't gonna hurt me or whatever. Like <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the hypocritical thing. I'm sorry to, to ask another question, but this is hypocritical on my part, and I have to I have to apologize in advance for this because I hope this doesn't sound foul. When I heard that you were coming on the show and I started to research, I go online. I'm thinking you're going to look like Precious, right? And then I go online, <laughs> I, I go online because you think we want to, in our mind, think that we don't want to see beautiful women get hit, and that's foul. So I just want to say that to everybody out there because we all matter. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I looked online, and you 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 can model. Like like people, will, when after this interview, they'll go online and they'll see you. Um, is it really, really un? They, when people see that, like V said, if you're pretty or you're attractive and then uh, you are a boxer, do people kind of uh, maybe take you for granted and think they can get in the ring and they won't get served up? Or uh, what does it mean to, to be attractive and still be in the arts? Oh, yeah, people definitely do. Like, for instance, going back to my pro debut, before when you um when you Googled my name, all you seen was track and field. So, you know. 
people slept like you know my opponent i remember she was like oh you know she just burned track there's gonna be an easy win yeah okay so <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i always tell you know females you can still be a lady you know be a lady outside the ring when you get in the ring handle your business you know a lot of people feel like you know a girl when she she box she supposed to look all dykish and stuff no Still carry yourself like a lady. Do your handle your business in the ring. When you come out, you know, go ahead, hook your hair up, put your heels on. You're still a lady at the end of the day. But man, are you the only woman yeah. I know that can twerk and then throw a hook? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, male train, male train, male train, different. Male train, <laughs> be up there twerk and then she come throwing jabs and hooks and stuff like that. I'm like, yo, man, how do you do this, man? Yes, I am a unicorn, but you know, they I love what I do, and you got whatever when you love something, you gotta enjoy it and make it fun. You know, every day we go to the gym, and you know, I'm practicing my craft, you know, going back to the basics, my jab, my hooks. Why not make it fun? Yeah, 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 yeah. that's yeah, true, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Get That's through the true. training session by any means yeah, necessary, yeah. right? If you look for yeah. boxing, you do the same thing over every day. You know what I'm saying? Come to the gym. We work on that slip. Make it fun. You're working on the combinations. Make it fun. You know, so it doesn't be like, oh, uh, you know, you get bored. So, you know, and I tell a person, if I'm going to the gym, we working on stuff, I'm going to make it fun. I'm yeah, still going to yeah. put the work in. But, you know, yeah. I'm going to add a little six, 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 that, 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 you know? <laughs> <laughs> you got any well, fights coming up, Mel? I mean, right now, uh, my manager said, let's wait till next year with this whole COVID thing. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm looking to mix it up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm thinking about going to the bare knuckle side. What? Get out of here. Now, that's interesting. No, they got bare, they got bare knuckle boxing now. Yeah, what? that's yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know that. Wow. You yeah, know, Clarissa Shields uh, was going into uh, MMA, as I understood. She's thinking about playing around with MMA. Is that something that you might be interested in? Or- hell no. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> Mel said, let's keep, this, let's keep this fight standing up, right? Exactly. <laughs> sure. You know, I want to you know, with you. I wanna keep it on my feet, you know. Okay. Uh, she- much respect to everybody that want to cross over the MMA. You know, um, and nah, nah, it ain't for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Now, who are some of who are some of your boxing heroes? My boxing, well, of course, Mike Tyson. <laughs> um, uh, heroes. I would say him because everything that he been through and everything and all this other stuff. We we have like similar. Similar story, so I I could you know relate to Mike Tyson, so I look at him like as a hero. You know, I I remember at, at one time when um Layla Ali was fighting, and it got a lot of publicity, obviously because of her name and and her skill set. Do you think that they need to do more to advance women's boxing? It seems like it doesn't get its fair due, or um or is that accurate? You know, speaking of Leila Ali, I feel like the platform that she had, I feel like she could have definitely did a lot for women's boxing and she didn't did nothing. So, you know. Uh-oh, um, we got a challenge here. Here it go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here it go. You, you can interview any other team of uh, boxers that say the same thing. The platform that she had, you know, in this whole in her whole boxing journey, she could have did something like for women's boxing. You know, if you had a platform and you up there, why don't you lend out your hand to, you know, to the other women and lift them up so we can keep this growing, you know, but she, she mm. didn't. So. Well, well. Yeah, you, you don't even see an interview. She don't come anywhere. Right. I don't, I don't I even she see does, her talking I think about. She does like commentating on like some, some shows or something like that. Doesn't she like, like that ninja show or something that she do commentating or something like that? I mean, that's not boxing. No, she doesn't do anything about it. No, I'm just saying she's working, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's wrong. Right. I mean, she's working. She's working. She got it done. That, you know, I like what she's doing. You know, she has, she's doing her home decoration thing. She's doing her cooking thing. She got her cookbook. And, and that's all good, you know. But, you know, she was also part of women's boxing. And she does know the struggles and everything. And I feel like, you know, instead of her trying to pick a fight with Carissa and talking down on her, why not help your sister? You know what I'm saying? Imagine having yeah. Layla Ali and then you, you lift up Carissa Shields on a platform. Imagine what both of them can do to uplift women's boxing and bring it to a whole nother platform 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, she couldn't even do that. You know, she want to sit here and fight with a younger girl like, oh, I'm the go. I'm the go. How about, you know, trying to help? That's what that's what your father would have did. Muhammad Ali. He was about helping his brothers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very true. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you a question. When you yeah. when you are on a fight day, when you're on after you've trained and everything like that, what is it like that day? Because I understand you don't, you know, a fighter doesn't do much. You have to relax and calm down. How does that work that day when you when you wake up on fight day? What is what is your procedure? Oh man, I just try to just stay relaxed and um just you know the, the thing for me is just to stay relaxed and like, you know, you know what time it is. It's time to go to work, you know. I just try to keep myself uh, calm and just, you know, watch uh, funny TV shows while I'm in a hotel room before it's time to go to the venue and, you know, and just be in a happy place. Because oh, that's what I perform better when I'm, you know, less stressed. You know, when yeah. I'm nice and relaxed, I you perform relaxed. good. I just try to stay as calm and just think about, you know, stuff that, you know, that make me laugh until it's time to go in the ring and destroy my father. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, no, what's no. your toughest fight? What's your toughest yeah. fight, Mel? Who was your toughest fight? Oh, man, my toughest fight was, uh, what's her name? Kathy Wilson in China. Oh, okay. my God. You know, my coach had to talk to my store. i would never forget it. The first round, Man, this girl hit me with a jab, man. My neck, my neck did a movement like I was an ostrich. My whole shit just went like woof. <laughs> <laughs> my coach, the first round passed. My coach was like, look, he said, look, she trying to come get your belt. You better wake the F up. I was up. After that, man, it was like uh my coach was playing a video game and I was doing everything, all the moves. I man, but she was good, man. And, yeah. and like Zach was saying earlier, she was from she from Texas. She's originally from the Dominican Republic, but she was trained in Texas. This mm. girl right here was was moving like a man, her angles, everything. She was long, tall. Man, she she did she was definitely in my toughest fight. Okay. Wow. Hey, okay. Can you tell people how how was the next like the day after the fight? How did, how was your body? What what do you have to go through after that? What What is your body like? How do you feel the day after a fight? How do you recover? In other words, yeah, how do you recover? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, oh, I go get some caramel cone ice cream, and <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I go get some soul food, and and I just relax. You can eat and again, I, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> but yeah, definitely uh, recover with some food and ice. Mm. So you take a lot of ice baths? Hell no. I don't put <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I ain't my getting no ice. Up, you, you, usually I get li a little nicks over around here. I get, you know, a little swollen like around here. So uh, I get like a little ice pack. That's it. I'm not getting nobody's uh, cold ice tub. Pack. Wow. Oh, she was going to say ice was for the drink, man. You know what I mean? Like, oh, <laughs> now, now, let me ask you, when, when, when the fighting game is over, what do you want to do next? Are you going to uh, do commentary? What do you want to do after this? Where does this go after your fighting day is over? You know what? I really would like to go walk in the footsteps of Eunice Kennedy. You know, she was the founder of the Special Olympics because, you know, um, I, you guys see my video. Of, you know, I work with Kaylee. She has autism. I want to do something with the Special Olympics because I, I feel like these kids are so special, man. And I feel like the world don't really pay attention to them because they're special needs. And yeah. these kids are amazing. So after boxing, I would like to, you know, do something with the Special Olympics. That's beautiful. Oh, that's that's yeah. awesome. Mel, Mel awesome. does great. Mel does a lot. She trains with a, a young lady that has autism, and as everyone knows my son has autism. That's how kind of like me and Mel connected through that through that whole autism thing. So like you know, salute to you all time queen for doing that for always standing up and showing them that. They, they, they have a, they have a champion that will always represent them all the time. I really that's, appreciate that's, that. That's, that's, that's beautiful. That's, that's beautiful. Awesome. I I am a person who who can't box, but I need to be able to handle <laughs> mine when I deal with Ray Ray and Pookie, the natives. <laughs> and, you know, if I want to start, I just want to be able to handle that. So how do I start? Because I know it's a lot different than obviously boxing than fighting. You know, what I mean, I know it's different and. Um, I think the worst box in the world will hurt somebody in the street. Is that is that fair? Oh yeah, I mean, you see what happened to Nate. You see that. Guy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that that YouTuber guy can't fight, and look, and you you see what happened. It's true. The ones who can't fight, they dangerous. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's, 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 it's so funny. That's, you and I was talking about this, uh, Mel, about um, like Nate came in there. His, his strategy was all street. He might have been knocking out dudes in Seattle, but he really would like, have somebody with a skill set is a total different animal. And like yeah. we was talking about, like, what did he do wrong besides just walking in the ring? That was the first thing he did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do wrong after He's that? Not a who, right. who was training him? Who trained him? Who told him, like, hey, you can go here and get into this fight? Like, he got, no. He, like Zap said, you don't play boxing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the first thing Nate did was wrong. Whoever trained him should have been fired <laughs> um, <laughs> when he got into the ring when he seen this train coming towards him he, he just stood there and yeah, yeah. You, you know you know how, uh, how us people are if we see something coming towards us what we gonna do get out the way get out the way he's there right. yeah, <laughs> the thing what I noticed what I noticed that Nate kept doing is I think he thought he was in a swimming pool that's why he kept diving head first <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he, he came I mean, right he into the confused, punches, man. Yeah, he kept charging. The guy just after this first round, the second round, they figured it out and they said, Joe, if he keeps charging in, yeah. take a step back and just land yep. a punch. Yep, that's all. And that was it. That's all they had to do. You know, yeah. it was over. Yeah. And it was um melatonin time. <laughs> <laughs> now are fighters are fighters born? Or fight are fighters born, or is it something that you just really yeah, I know people can train, but you may not be able to teach. It's just in you or it's not. Is it is that how it works? I think the mental has to be in you. Yeah, you're born with the mental. Yeah. Okay. I think you have to have that yeah, the, men, the mental, and then I, you know, I do think there's some fighters that are born. You know, like for instance, what separates me from all these other female fighters is that I fought real opponents. A lot of these girls I hear are walking around like, "Oh yeah, I'm this and I'm that," but you, you know, a lot of these girls fought crackheads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everybody look good. You look good with the crackhead. You look good with the UPS lady, the male lady. You know yeah. But when you, but the test is when you go in there with somebody, a real fighter, and you can go with them toe to toe or whatever. That shows that you are a real born fighter, you know. And yeah. so I remember a coach telling me years ago. He said, when you look at somebody's uh, record, don't look at the people they fought. Because you correct. can have an undefeated record and you or fought. Or tomato cans. Oh, right. Exactly. Yep. And a lot yep. of the, and a lot, and you know, um, uh, the guys and the girls, a lot of them have these made up records, you know? Mm, and yeah. and yes, when they get yeah. in there with real fighter, they look like Nate. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. so you, you, think, you think a lot of boxers now handpick their own? <clears throat> Oh hell yeah, 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 <laughs> hell yeah. She said hell yeah. So basically, it's yeah. about just it's about padding your record mostly now. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, oh yeah, a lot, a, of a lot of these boxes are definitely cherry picking, and they, you know, uh, it's just it's just crazy, man. It's just crazy. A lot of these fighters out here cherry picking, and they out here talking about all oh, they the best and all this other stuff. When you look at those records, man, and you look you look at it like that, you just fought to somebody with twenty losses. Like, yeah, uh -huh. how do you feel good about that? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. what happens when we first start off. You know, a lot of times they bring those fighters up slow, you know, and they beat mm -hmm. them, you know. They, they, mm -hmm. fight, they fight Glass Joe. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Mel, Mel, listen, this is so great that you came on. Truly appreciate it. Like, getting a woman's perspective on fighting is something different. It feels yeah. so good. Sister, I love you so much. Where can people find you at? How they follow you on Instagram and all, and let us know when anytime you're doing something with autism, you know, just hit me up. I'm there. I'm there. Yes, I'm yes, yes, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Um, my Instagram is killer underscore mail. My Twitter is at Melissa St. Bill. My Facebook is Melissa X St. Bill. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go get them. Yo, hopefully, hopefully we can see you fight soon. Hopefully, COVID. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. that's <laughs> we can see fight somewhere. Oh, I'm gonna definitely keep you posted. I'll be, uh, well, yep, and we'll be there. And all of all of us chop it out fans, we're gonna be there for you, rooting you on, sister. All right. All right Love you, Mel. Go get them, champ. All Take right, man. Take, right. Take care. Take care. Peace, sister. Peace. Peace. Yo, D. Yo, what up, you, man? Can you can you imagine having a problem with a female on the block and pulling up with Mel? 
I would not understand. <laughs> get out the car and say which one is she, and she just washed her right up the block. Yo, I will, I will take Mel in my. I'll, I'll take Mel in my car to go look for Karens. <laughs> yeah, a matter of Every fact, Karen. there's a couple of dudes I want to bring Mel to. <laughs> oh, right, to take that woman. Yeah. A, couple of, a couple of people owe me some money. So I'm yeah, go that's what I'm talking about. about. Somebody that owes me money. I know a couple of dudes that she can get the money back for me. Word up. She's, Word up, she's an enforcer, man. You know, yeah. they want to they they see it, her coming. No, yeah, and they're sleeping they on never her. see her coming. That's right. No, they yeah. won't. They would sleep on her for her looks, and they would sleep on her for her voice. Oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like she would wash you. She just right. wash you. I think yeah. that's why. I think that's why Mel likes Mike Tyson. They got the same kind of high pitched voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Tyson in her. She's got some Tyson in her. Yeah. But no, yeah. but no, no, no. Listen, I love that that sister right there. Seriously, Absolutely. like from day one, she always showed yeah. mad love and stuff like that, and the stuff she do with. Especially these children is, is really big, man. That's a that's she's a real knockout champion, man. So I love yeah, you know, man. you know, this has inspired me. First of all, you just see, uh, we had two great boxers who were very personable and very just good people. People yeah. think because you fight that you have to be angry or whatever. It's not that. Right. And right. then the other thing they've inspired me to get back and make my comeback. You know, I mean, <laughs> no, because no, no, I, I mean, because realistically, Zab had a twenty-five year career. I had about a 25 second career and I think I, I, didn't, I didn't want to end it that way. So I'm, I'm, I'm announcing tonight I am making my comeback. So anybody in like fifth or sixth grade, I'm telling you right now, I'm coming for you. That's right. I'm coming for you. That's right. I'm coming for you. And Kelvin, right. you can grab those kids in your classroom right now behind you. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going to be yeah. Yo, D, how you feeling? How you feeling, D? Yo, I got a little headache from that salt, man. That's salt. I know, I know. <laughs> I can, I can tell you, you about to blow your top with that high blood pressure. From oh my rice. God, man! That, yeah, you it tastes. It has, it's seasoned, but it's salty. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's gonna blow up though. Chicken wing is about to blow up. I'm telling you. Yo, that prison right fried rice is the truth. So listen, man. We got we had another guest tonight, and this is going <laughs> yeah. Y'all see what that comment down there? They want to <laughs> see. They want to see the mascot. They want to see Derek. <laughs> <laughs> they want to see the mascot. They say, "Where's the mascot at?" <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, the, the, man. The, 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 that's our that's that's number one fan. That we, we come with Derek in the background. I don't know who y'all talking about, about, man. I don't even <laughs> know talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yo, so, listen, Derek but Ryan. really, I want to like. One thing was like we know we all we have women in our lives that we all care about like that we have mothers sisters wives girlfriends and nieces and um we and some of the things that were going on like a black black women's health issues have been coming up and some of the things like that have been like some of the access to health is to health care and the and for black females uh in, in this country and so with that we're gonna have a specialist come on right now my sister who i love dearly and she was checking on me all during COVID time and i love her dearly can can our super producer bring in Kelly, please? Hey, hey Kelly, 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 Kelly. Can we get Kelly doing? unmuted? Can we get Kelly, Kelly unmuted? Hey, Kelly. Hey, hey, Kelly. Kelly. Hey, what up, sister? How you doing? Hey, thanks for having me. Kelly, hey, Kelly, Kelly how you doing? doing? Kelly, you ain't trying to fight. You ain't trying to box or nothing, right? Listen, Kelly. I can't fight. <laughs> I, can't fight. I, can't, I can't fight someone in the fifth grade, so I'm, I'm with you. That's right. Kelly, seriously, right. seriously, Kelly, they got some tough kids in fifth grade. Now, you might think about maybe third grade or fourth grade. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I've seen a lot of fifth graders. A lot of fifth graders can get it in now. <laughs> as long as you haven't gone through puberty, I think I'll be good. Yeah, you know, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, so Kelly, give the people a little bit of background on what you do. Anyway. Okay, so uh, I'm very blessed to be here. Uh, I'm an expert in maternal health and health disparities, the health uh, of, of Black women, of queer folks, of Latinx folks here in the New York City area and across the nation. I'm the Chief Equity Officer of the National Birth Equity Collaborative, where we really strive to support a world where all Black mamas, pregnancies, and babies thrive. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. That's what's very saying. nice. Now, let me ask you a question, because it, it sounds like this is not just a vocation, but more like a calling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I always think people in the medical field is something that you've got to love doing, that you have to have a passion for. And it just seems like you do have that. Where did it come from? I'm very, I'm very, very blessed to come from a long generation of um, health 
providers, health workers. My mother was a neonatal nurse. My grandmother was a neonatal nurse. My father was Mississippi's first black nephrologist. So I grew up in the dirty South. So um, wow. Demond, you and what Chicken Wing was making, you don't want to have to go see my dad. So we <laughs> I told you, Chicken Wing trying to I, kill you. I, I didn't make it. Chicken Wing made it. He won me, but you ate it. Good. I had to try it. <laughs> Listen, no, 2021, we're thinking about our health, not just of us, but the people who we love. We're moderating our salt intake. We're getting out moving. That's the, really the reason why COVID is disproportionately affecting us all is because of our poor health status, which is actually not individual. It has to do with the effects of racism on health. So it's wow. nothing wrong with black people. It's nothing wrong with Latinx people. We're not biologically deficient. There's nothing, there's no gene that makes us different. What's different is that we make less money. We live closer to environmental toxins. We have stressors, exposure to violence that other people don't have, which age us on a cellular level. Mm. Wow. That's deep. So when we, get sick, when we get sick, we get extra sick. And we have the kind of jobs that put us on the front line of sickness because we can't go to our house in the Hamptons with our private doctors and hide out. Wow. That's right. That is, that, That's right. Well, I learned something. Um, you can't go to Walter now, Reed either. I, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I you can't just walk about, up at um, Walter Reed. Yeah about kind of like Sorry, dietary Kyle. stuff, which is, no, it's no problem. When, we, when, we, when we're younger, it, it looks like that we don't understand. I, I heard a doctor say, what you eat in your 20s and 30s will tell me what I'll be treating you for in your 50s and 60s. And I think early on, you know, you walk into stores, it seems like the healthy food is the most expensive and the least advertised, but Chips Ahoy are two bags for $5 and things like that. So some of these things seems like it's not coincidence that it almost seems like I've understood that there's certain people like even I think the Heart Association things, they will support some of this food and then they'll be against it later on. So it's like how do people decipher what they should, you know, their eating habits and things like that that's perpetuated from a, a young age? Well, I think we have to talk not about just individual behaviors, but about the system, right? So when we talk about zoning, when we look at how communities are, you know, you have to have a certain kind of license to open a liquor store, just like you have to have a certain kind of license to open a market. So why, if I'm in East New York or Brownsville or, you know, make whatever low income area that has a lot of like black folks or indigenous people or Latinx people. Why do we find certain things like liquor stores and we can't find bookstores and supermarkets? Really that has to do with like politics and policies and who's making the policies. It's not just about individual choice. It has to do with environment, how it's structured. Um, and segregation has been really proven. Segregation from like a hundred years ago, from after the civil war, from, at, from, you know, the Jim Crow South and also not just the Jim Crow South, but Ch New York City and Chicago are the most segregated cities in the country. So mm -hmm. our idea around how racism impacts health has been studied very clearly. And it just doesn't only affect like guys like you, but it really turns out that it affects maternal health. So pregnancies, um, babies, uh, it's all uh, impacted by structural racism and gender oppression that really control where you eat, what you eat, um, where you live, and how you can work, which all affects health. Mm. Okay. Kelly, do you think, um, you know, what do, do doctors see black women different like they think we could like black women saying we because i'm half i'm half woman my mother was a woman so i'm half woman so <laughs> do, you think, do you think that they they don't see like they always think like black women could take more, so much pain and do a lot of stuff are they treated different and uh, do you think doctors treat or the, is the studies anything statistics that they treat black women different than the two uh white women racism is such a key part of medicine for a long time i looked at my brother's books he's a surgeon in the south Folks are taught that black people um, can experience more pain. I've talked with white doulas, white, white birth, birth workers who say, oh, let that person push. Black women, their hips are meant to birth babies. So oftentimes when we're learning through lots of qualitative interviews, 
through um, surveying doctors is that they do have these biased beliefs that they've been taught um, throughout their medical education that wind up with women not being listened to. And that's really the case when we saw Serena Williams, a woman who is clearly in shape, who is wealthy, had a white husband, almost died having her baby because she knew what was going on with her. She knew that she couldn't breathe. She knew that she had uh, a blood clot. She'd had one before, but they dismissed her. And that happens to a lot of black women who maybe don't have the same privileges that Serena Williams, you know, does and did. And it winds up with them losing their lives. Damn. So I know they push like a lot of black women to have C-sections. Why do you think, you, why do they do that? C-sections pay hospitals more. That's certainly a piece of it. Yeah. Mm. They're quicker. Labor takes days. You know, we have overcrowded hospitals, particularly in black neighborhoods and public hospitals where folks are trying to have empty beds, especially think about COVID time. Beds are at an all time premium. Uh -huh. Right. So folks are hoping to have their babies and get out. Don't want to be at the hospital. Right. So we have to really think through. These are all systemic things. That's why we don't I don't talk about the individual. And certainly at the National Birth Equity Collaborative, what we study and advocate for is changing the system, healthcare care systems, changing other kinds of systems, um, looking at policies across the nations and in states to make sure that it's easier for black women to have the pregnancies and reproductive lives that they deserve. Mm. Wow. So do, well, you, do, you, wow. do you think more black women should push themselves towards using doulas? Certainly. If you have the uh, ability to have anyone in your corner, a doula is uh, a person who supports you. They can support you emotionally through labor. They often act as a witness. You'd be surprised how many people give birth alone. Right. And uh, we know that during the COVID times, when you're not allowed to sometimes have a visitor, as many visitors as you would normally want, folks really want someone to witness uh, of them giving birth, in, in part, a lot of the black women that I talk to want to have doulas to kind of guard against the medical racism that many of us have experienced inside of healthcare systems. No, Kelly, um, you, um, you've seen, a, I'm sure you've seen a lot of things, especially with um, African American women. What would you say is a common illness that women? you know, will have, but they neglect it for a long period of time before they get treatment for it. Well, you know, oftentimes pregnant people, pregnant women, we're the most fierce advocates. You know, I'm sure you know someone who was pregnant and stopped drinking, stopped uh, smoking, right? So pregnant people tend to take really good care of themselves. However, America hasn't always taken great care of us. It's more dangerous for me to give birth today than it was for my mother to give birth to me over 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And part of that has to do with chronic conditions and how healthy we are before pregnancy. So again, Damon, tell chicken wing, we don't need that. We don't need the salt. <laughs> Hypertension is so closely tied to what we call mm -hmm. severe maternal morbidity, especially in New York City, which are life-threatening complications during uh, childbirth. So things like bleeding to death, um, having really high blood pressure, uh, strokes, all of these things contribute to the fact that in New York City, black women are eight times more likely to die of pregnancy related causes than white women. And across the nation, we're at least three times more likely to die than our white counterparts. And that is irrespective of education. So people say like, oh, if we were all rich, if we were all Beyonce, if we were all Serena Williams, we would, uh, this would be a problem. No, this is a problem of racism. I cannot educate myself out of this because a black woman like me who has a master's degree is still way more likely to die as a result of pregnancy than any other race of woman who dropped out of high school. Wow. Wow. That's, um, wow. I mean, it, racism it, it, is everything. Go ahead, Rob. Sorry. No, I was just going to say for all the women out there that have any questions for Kelly, please chime in and um, ask her all the, any question that you want to ask her. That's what she's yeah. here for. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. And mostly I have these conversations with men. I mean, excuse me, with women or with queer folks. This is the first time I've ever been with four men of color. Men 
have a role to play in maternal health. Just like, you know, I'm tired of white people expecting black people to end racism. Like, it's not my problem. You created this. This is your problem. It's yeah, your right. moral yeah. feeling. Yeah. I, I feel the same way about patriarchy, misogyny, and maternal health, right? So it's not just what happens inside of the hospital my brothers we have a ho- we have a horrible issue with homicide and people who are pregnant or have just had a baby it's a leading cause of death for pregnancy uh, and it's uh, most of the time our partners our family members our loved ones that are killing us and so i really am very grateful to have this conversation with men here um because it's not a conversation that's often being had even by educated men in my social circle they say oh what's the, what is a midwife what is a doula oh she's pregnant i'm not thinking about what she's eating or the doctor will tell her no i'm um, if you have pregnant people in your life if you have um pregnant women i'm really usher asking you um requesting of you petitioning you to check in on your sister and check in on the people in your life that are pregnant or parenting because they really need your support do you find that there's a lot of people that that are pregnant, especially I guess I would assume younger people that really don't know what to do, that really don't know what it entails. It's more than just going to term, obviously, to deliver. But there's a lot. I mean, I understand some people don't get prenatal care. Um, how do we start to let the word get out for people to start doing those things? And I think people think there's an economic component to it. That's why some people don't do it. There certainly is an economic component to it. <laughs> and that again is a part of structural racism. If I don't, if I have the kind of job that won't allow me to take time off for paid sick leave, and I have to pick between feeding my family and going to the doctor's office where I have to sit for four hours to even be seen, right? So giving up my full days, it's less likely that I'm going to go. If I have to take three trains and a bus to get there, it takes me half of a day, I'm less likely to go. So these are all structural things that even folks who have the best of intentions, who really want to birth um, their children and make sure that their children are healthy and whole or well to the best of their ability are unable to do in the system that we've set up here in America. Uh, So I don't know if necessarily it's a function of age, certainly, High risk pregnancies are more common with people who are older, like over the age of 40 and under the age of 20. So on both sides of those, as you get older, things can be more serious. Like we talked about earlier, when you're older, hypertension, diabetes, um, all, you know, heart disease, all those things play a role uh, in pregnancy outcomes. So we got a question. Yeah, I'm sorry, we got a question. Someone asking. asking uh, what can women do to make sure they advocate for themselves uh, when they go to the doctor while pregnant? What can they do to advocate for themselves? So um, respectful care is a right. It is a human right. And um, that's part of what the reproductive justice movement really asserts, that you have the right to respectful care. Some of recent analyses have shown that having a provider that looks like you is one way to support like infant health. And so I really ask everyone that make sure that you are comfortable with your provider, that you can share what you need. We have, we often work through kind of whisper campaigns. If you are not comfortable with your provider, if you have someone in your social circle, ask them if they have a provider that is for you. Um, get everything that you're absolutely entitled to. There are lots of programs now that are cropping up across the tri-state area, across the nation to provide birth workers like doulas to folks that are low income who desperately need it. Um, so it work to see if if you're um, eligible for any of the social supports that your city, state, jurisdiction, your health department near you might ensure that you have access to. Um, always bringing a friend and then making sure that you're in the healthiest environment that you can before you're pregnant, during pregnancy and after. There are lots of things to look out for, right? So if you find that you uh, can't see, that you are, have blurry vision, if you have wounds that are opening back up, if you have very high fevers, these are life and death issues. So when you have someone in your life, fellas, that's complaining of a headache, that actually could be a sign of a stroke. But oftentimes like, oh, she's tired. She just had a baby. She needs to lay down. No, that person needs to get to the hospital and we cannot take no for an answer. If not, it can have a real life or death consequence. We all have, we're men of a certain age and we have lives. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 
what can we do with, with regard to our women? As a, you know, they transition from birth, you know, ability to have a birth, and you know, kind of transition into menopause years. You know what I mean? How can we kind of help um, with that, and with, you know, with their health and whatnot? You know? Well, one of the things you can is to help ensure that everybody in your life that is reaching that over forty age. Um, is to have the proper screenings, including mammograms. So breast cancer, even though we have a lot of screening in the black community, there's been a lot of work to get everyone screened for breast cancer. Black women are far more likely to die of breast cancer than white women for a variety of reasons. When we get our breast cancer diagnosis, it's often more further advanced than white women who find out that they have breast cancer. So I would say start off with everything that we know we need to do, including Mama, uh, mammography, so mammograms, and, you know, colorectal screening. So we think about Chadwick Boseman. I know you guys um, think about it. That was really um, a challenge. And I have a cousin who also died of colon cancer at the age of 35. These things are not unheard of in our community. And we have to make sure um, women tend to put everybody else before us. That's what we're socialized to do. It's the kids, it's my partner. I got to take mm -hmm. care of the people who are younger than me. And I got to take care of the people who are older than me. And so oftentimes we fall through the cracks and that shows up in maternal health, that shows up in breast cancer, that shows up in ovarian cancer, um, that shows up in heart disease. And so if you have folks in your life, really encourage them, see what you can do to take that time off, clear that to-do list for her, um, make sure that she knows that she, she has your support and taking care of her because where would you be without her? Very Absolutely. Very Kelly, you, do you know, do you have do you know uh, if midwives or any midwives? Do you know any companies? I mean, midwives that take insurance because that's the main thing. A lot of stuff we, we want to do with doulas and midwives and stuff like that. And if some things are cash, you know, their cash visit. Like, are the insurance companies taking or, or is any kind of policy coming down the pipeline that will start recognizing people want doulas and midwives with these insurance companies? Well, the, the four of you are pretty lucky because you live in New York City and New York City has hospitals, public hospitals that have integrated midwifery services. So if you can be on Medicaid, you can be uninsured and have access to a doula at most of our hosp public hospitals and, or a few of our public hospitals in New York City. But we have a broken system, right? And so keeping our next president accountable to ensuring better policies and health care for everybody Okay, everybody is going to be a key function because we can't, health is a human right. Paying to have health, care, health coverage is something that's extremely challenging. I have a hard time finding um, black providers, black female providers, queer providers. It, you know, all of these things in our system are very hard to, to procure. But in the in some cities, um, the government has been working to make them more accessible. But there's no place there's no place that has a amazing place uh, or a hospital system or a hospital infrastructure uh, for Black women to give birth. But we we're working to change that every day. And we're happy that we have sisters like yourself that's on the front lines ready to change make that change for us. Thank you. Absolutely. She's a Southern girl, so they say they Southern girls got that country strong on them. So you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, is there a place, Kelly, that people can go and get all this information? Yes. So the National Birth Equity Collaborative, you can, if you're here on YouTube, you can see it um, uh, on my screen. It's at Birth Equity. So that's B-I-R-T-H-E-Q-U-I-T-Y. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram. We have all the research toolkits and networks to help you have the pregnancy, um, reproductive life, and sex life that you want and deserve. All right. Sex life. Like that. right. right. Go get my Viagra right now. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. Don't get no Viagra. Kelly, listen, uh, <laughs> Kelly, listen <laughs> sister. So thankful that you came on tonight to educate the folks, to educate myself and the brothers here. Yes. We truly appreciate sisters like yourself that's on the front line, that's advocating for our sisters, our queens that we truly need to survive. We, us as a nation, we don't, we will no one nowhere without black women. So we love right. you. We love you, yeah. dearly, sister. Appreciate you, sister. Thank you right. so much. Thank you for having me. Have a good night. Have a great All night. Right. Good night. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Yo, D. All right. What up, how bro? You, how you feeling now? Hey, it's coming down. So, I, like, you blurry I again. You blurry yeah, again. You blurry again. Yo, let me let me explain. Let me explain something. 
Let yeah, me explain exactly. something. Chicken Wing should have known better than to feed you that because he has a doula. He made that at doula's house. So he should have known better. <laughs> he should have known better than to give you that. You know, he had a support oh, system. He has a doula. You know what I'm saying? Wing, but he came over and anyway. Wing, wing might have insurance on me or something, man. Let me tell you something. You get some of that sea moss, brother. It'll yeah. bring you oh, yeah. You're right. Oh, yeah. That's all you need. That's all you need. I, I need CMOS, I need Zab to train me, and I need a spa with uh, Killer Mel. No, I'll be, I'll be back. back. The last, no, the yeah, last part. Yeah, I don't know about that. Don't do Mel. Yeah, Mel, 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 Mel got that hook. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't think you want that. Let, let me let me tell you something, right? It's it's um, what Zab said is one hundred percent true, right? The human being is not made to be punched in the face continuously. You know what right. I'm saying? So when you get when you get in that ring, like Calvin's told about how he sparred or whatever, and I remember like. Uh, sparring session I had and I got hit I'll be honest with you at that moment I just wanted to change my clothes and get out of the gym as fast as possible oh yeah because oh, yeah. the thing is a good hit gives you a reality check that you do not belong it does. It it does. Does. Oh, my, my, my uncle Johnny did, did it to me he thought I, I thought when Mike Tyson came out I thought it could be Mike Tyson my uncle Johnny country strong dude slap <laughs> and I was like whoa a whoa. slap I imagine, a slap is hard so it's yeah. to imagine get a, a Punch in the face. That's how I'm done. I'm out. Definitely. Yeah. It's yeah. not the play. With. It's not the play. With. It, I mean, it's messed up because Nate dedicated the, the fight to his kids, and now they still got to go to school eventually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he's 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 going to be a punchline forever now. No, no pun yeah. intended. He's the best and, thing um, that came out the night. Yeah, yeah it's it's gonna yeah. be tough. But you know what? I mean, realistically, I think people need to understand that boxing is nothing to play with. I mean, it's they, they work game. hard. And they train, and in their yeah, hands no. are lethal weapons, and that's the reality of it. Listen, yeah. man, you, you you all you got, and you speak on sparring, yeah. man. Let me tell you, it's a if everybody looks great. You get in there, you you're on your you're, you're on your pads, you're working your pads, you're working your bag, yeah. and you're feeling. You yeah, know how people yeah. do it. They kind of got their little, you know, they put their cell phone up and they record themselves and sending it up on Facebook. You're feeling good, man. You know, yeah. you get in there What's with that? somebody else, it's man. With somebody hits back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get in there with Zab and Killer Mel, you're gonna wind up seeing Kelly. Oh, yeah. Some help. Some help. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. 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 Yeah. That's right. That's right. gonna wind up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. Yeah. Brothers, this is a good yeah. night, man. I think we had Excellent. a great show tonight, man. Um, Excellent. the fight's about to come on in about three minutes. So I want everybody to I'm fight. ready for this fight, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Listen, everyone, thank you, brothers. I love you. Y'all travel love safe. You too, man. Man. And we'll be back in seven days. Love yes, you, sir. Yeah, and thanks. Thanks and shout out to all the guests, y'all. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ass, 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 ass. Super Zab, Killer Mel, and Chicken Wing. Love y'all. Yeah. And Kelly. Kelly. Yeah.